Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, American Comics. Becoming a Dimension Mephisto will cause trouble. Chapter 71. In New Mexico, when Agent Chin stopped hiding his strength, Crocodile fell into passivity. Different from his wide open and wide open attacks, although Agent Chin's attacks don't look gorgeous, they are extremely condensed. With concentrated power, Crocodile's scattered attacks are simply like paper, and he can be easily defeated. He was crushed by the Chin agent's attack, and then broke through the obstacle to cause damage to Crocodile. In just two or three collisions, Crocodile was already covered in blood. Although the desert was his home field, he felt the fear he hated most at the moment. He must escape. He made a decision in his heart. Although it was a shame, he would keep the green hills and not be afraid of running out of firewood. Although Crocodile didn't know this proverb, he had the same sentiment. Agent Chin came at him with a knife, and the light of the knife bloomed in the air, glaring at everyone. Crocodile gritted his teeth and glared at this scene. The other party was driving him to death. Walk. Facing this terrifying knife, Crocodile didn't have any hesitation. He immediately turned into sand, blended into the desert, and then quickly escaped. However, although he relied on his fruit ability to avoid Agent Chin's knife, things are always unpredictable. As a rainbow fell from the sky, an explosion occurred in the desert. At the same time, Crocodile happened to be moved to the place where the rainbow fell. Boom! The dust was soaring into the sky, and this rainbow was able to directly ignore Crocodile's elementalization and blast him out of the desert. Whoa! Crocodile, who suffered severe injuries, spurted a large mouthful of blood from his mouth and hit the sand heavily. At the moment, he regretted so much why he came here. He didn't understand what kind of combat power this world had, yet he was so confident. He didn't even expect that the elementalization he was once so proud of would be ignored one after another in this world. He had only experienced this kind of thing when he was young, and that time, his character was broken, so he focused on putting his confidence in external forces. What kind of terrifying world is this? Crocodile didn't understand, but after experiencing it several times in succession, he already had the idea of retreating. He can no longer stay in this world, he must go back to the world he is familiar with. However, the severely injured crocodile couldn't get up at the moment, so he could only lie on the ground and hope that others would ignore him. At the same time, he was also very curious about what kind of existence could actually kill him with one blow. He hurt himself to such an extent. Try to raise your head and look towards the rainbow. After the rainbow dissipated, four warriors in armor appeared in front of everyone. Agent Chin ignored Crocodile lying on the ground, but stepped in front of the four soldiers, who are you? The four warriors looked at Agent Chin. Although the opponent looked very funny, judging from the momentum, the opponent's strength was not weak. In Asgard, the strong deserve respect. One of the hairy warriors held an axe and looked at Agent Chin, fighters of Midgard, we are Asgard warriors from Asgard. This time we come to Earth for the sake of our crown Prince Thor. As he said that, he turned to look at Crocodile, who was seriously injured not far away. We are very sorry for causing such great harm to your companions, but we did not expect that someone would suddenly appear where Bifrost fell. Agent Chin didn't even look at the livid Crocodile. He frowned and asked, Thor, are you sent by Loki? When the Asgard warriors heard Loki's name, their expressions immediately turned disdainful, Odin fell into a deep sleep. Loki, a liar, is not qualified to pick up the spear of Odin. So, we are here this time to welcome Thor back. Hearing this, Agent Chin nodded. He did not doubt the other party. After all, it was obvious that a god of lies would not be welcomed anywhere. Come with me, I will take you to see Thor. However, his current situation is not right, and you may be a little disappointed. Although they didn't understand the meaning of Agent Chin's words, the Asgard warriors tacitly agreed not to ask. They believed in Thor's character and believed that Thor would definitely return to Asgard under their persuasion. Several people passed by Crocodile and ignored him. This made Crocodile feel lucky but also felt ashamed and angry at being ignored. His teeth were clenching, but for the sake of his life, he still suppressed the shame and anger in his heart, lying on the sand, closing his eyes and slowly regaining his strength. Agent Chin took the Asgard warriors to meet with Thor. At the same time, he also asked the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to be careful about Crocodile. As for arresting Crocodile, he did not let the agents do it. After all, 
Any detention of crocodile is meaningless until he finds a way to restrict crocodile's ability to use the fruit. This is true even for Agent Chin. He can defeat crocodile, or even kill him. But it is impossible to imprison him. While Agent Chin and Phil Coulson were discussing how to deal with Crocodile, Thor happily reunited with his comrades and also learned the fact that Loki had deceived him. But when faced with the Asgard warriors asking him to return to Asgard, Thor refused. Because he was deprived of his divine power by Odin and lost his identity as Thor, he was no longer the god who appeared with thunder. Today, he is just a stronger mortal, a waste who can't even lift his own weapon, Mjolnir. Regarding Thor's self-abandonment, the Asgard warriors also tried to persuade him, but it had no effect on Thor who had lost his spirit. At this moment, accidents always happen unexpectedly. Another rainbow fell from the sky, disturbing everyone present. Crocodile, who had regained some strength, saw that everyone's attention was attracted by the rainbow, and immediately and quietly paddled away in the sand. He can't stay here any longer, otherwise he doesn't know what will happen next. Sensing Crocodile's departure, Agent Chin frowned and wanted to stop him, but there was always a sense of crisis in his heart, which forced him to take action. Obviously, the people coming from Asgard this time are enemies. Then, Crocodile's departure can also save them one trouble. After all, if Crocodile and the other party are allowed to cooperate, the difficulty will not be simple. Vorstag, apart from you, has anyone else come to Midgard? Thor pointed at the drooping rainbow and asked the Asgard warriors doubtfully. The mortal Asgard warriors are all Thor's friends, including the axe-wielding Volstag, the hammer-wielding Hogan, the western sword-wielding Fandral, and the Asgard female warrior Sif. He was not surprised that these people would come to Earth to find him despite Loki's orders, but there were other people coming too, which was a bit beyond Thor's expectation. However, Sif also looked confused, we should be the only ones here. Before he finished speaking, the rainbow dispersed, and a tall metal creature appeared in front of everyone. The Asgard warriors and Thor exclaimed, Destroyer of Odin. Thor thought of something and rushed forward, Father. They did not disobey your order, they just wanted to see me, please don't punish them. Apparently, Thor took the appearance of the destroyer as Odin's wrath, because the Asgard warriors disobeyed orders and came to Earth without permission to look for him. However, Thor did not know that this order came from Loki, and the Asgard warriors were able to come to Earth because Loki was not convinced. Odin fell into a deep sleep, and now there is obviously only one person who can drive the destroyer, and that is Loki. Sure enough, sitting on the throne of Asgard, Loki held the spear of Odin and saw what happened on Earth through the destroyer and saw Thor's intercession for the Asgard warriors. His eyes were deep and he didn't know what he was thinking, but at the same time, the destroyer didn't make any movement. Volstag grabbed Thor. 733, Thor, Odin has fallen asleep, and Loki now controls Odin's spear, so the destroyer was not sent by Odin, but by Loki. Loki, Thor was shocked, he had never thought of this. Then, he waved happily towards the destroyer, hey, Loki, let Volstag and the others go, they didn't make any mistakes. Moreover, I already know that my father is not dead. You actually followed me again you make this kind of joke, but it's true that nothing has changed since childhood. In Thor's opinion, Loki is his younger brother, and he is just naughty and not a bad person, so he is so happy. After all, if it were Odin, his words might not be useful, but Loki was the brother he grew up with, so he had to betray his brother to save face. However, what Thor didn't know was that it was his attitude that instantly triggered Loki's anger. The destroyer's eyes suddenly lit up with a fiery light, which was a sign that the destroyer had begun to activate. The sudden change made Thor a little overwhelmed. Energy gathered in the eyes of the destroyer, Volstag felt something was wrong, and immediately swooped down, taking Thor out of the sight of the destroyer. A scorching ray instantly shot out from the destroyer's eyes, scorching the earth. When the rays stopped, there was a shining color in the desert, which was the result of the sand crystallizing after being burned by high temperatures. Thor's eyes were wide open. He was in disbelief. His lovely brother actually wanted to kill him. Why, Loki, why did you attack me? Loki stood up from the throne angrily, and he spoke his voice through the destroyer, Thor, as long as you are here, there will be no voice from me in the entire Asgard. No matter what I do, no matter how much I pay, Asgard will always have only Thor Thor. 
Why, am I not Loki from Asgard? You Thor is the crown prince, am I not Loki? Why do everyone look down on me? Why can you be loved by everyone despite being so reckless? You are simply a brainless person. What a reckless man, I should be the king of Asgard. Boom, angrily, he knocked the spear of Odin on the floor, making a dull sound, and the energy emitted made Loki look even angrier. Now I hold the spear of Odin, I hold the power. I issued an order not to allow anyone to go to Midgard, but they still ignore me and want to welcome back you, the exiled Thor. Thor, I have been living in your shadow all this time. Only by getting rid of you can Asgard be able to see my existence and recognize that I am their most suitable master. Thor was silent after hearing the thoughts that Loki had buried deep in his heart for countless years. He never thought that Loki would have such thoughts, and he had always ignored Loki's feelings. Others around him also felt some sympathy for Loki inexplicably. After all, he would always live in the shadow of his brother. Everyone ignored him and everyone looked down on him. This kind of frustration was enough to drive a person completely crazy. Not to mention that Loki has been holding it in for thousands of years. The Asgard warriors sneered at this. They looked down on Loki not because they ignored him, but because of Loki's own badness. Especially Sif, as she grew up with the Thor brothers, she has the deepest feelings about Loki's bad feelings. Not to mention that Asgard advocates strength. Thor possesses unrivaled power and is indomitable on the battlefield. He is the belief in the hearts of all soldiers. As for Loki, he was just playing with his magic to do some sneaky things, and he was playing with the people of Asgard. Isn't this how the God of Lies came out? If Loki hadn't always done things to deceive and tease others, would Loki have the title of God of Lies? No name of God is destined from birth. After Thor listened to Loki's words, he fell into silence. He didn't know how to answer the other party. He has always been reckless and did not ask too many questions. Therefore, for this reason, he made many mistakes. That's why he was stripped of his divine power by Odin and exiled to the earth. Therefore, when facing Loki, Thor discovered for the first time that not everything in this world can be solved with passionate recklessness. Thor's silence made Loki think that he was acquiescing to the people of Asgard's opinion of him. He felt that Thor also looked down on him from the bottom of his heart. The anger in his heart turned into the destroyer, who instantly moved and wanted to kill Thor directly so that he would only have the crown prince of Asgard. In his anger, he had forgotten at the moment that Odin was only sleeping, not dead. All he can think about now is killing Thor and taking back everything that belongs to him. The destroyer looks like a metal creation, and its movements should be a bit slow, but contrary to everyone's fixed impression, the destroyer is incredibly flexible. Locking Thor's direction, the destroyer instantly ran toward him. In a few strides, the destroyer was close to Thor. Fortunately, Thor was protected by Volstag next to him. Facing the destroyer's attack, Volstag immediately intercepted it with an axe. Not far away, other Asgard warriors immediately jumped up, took out their weapons, and attacked the destroyer one after another. Sif stood in front of Thor, holding the shield across his chest. Thor, get out of here quickly. Let's deal with it. After that, he roared and slashed towards the destroyer with his sword. Thor was still stunned on the spot, Agent Chin flashed, picked up his collar, and threw him directly to Phil Coulson's feet. Nothing can happen to him. Get him out of here. After giving the instructions, Agent Chin also slashed towards the destroyer with his sword. Understanding the urgency of the current matter, Phil Coulson didn't have any hesitation. He helped Thor and fled away with everyone. Although everyone's thoughts are good, it is obvious that the destroyer is not that easy to deal with. Although the Asgard warriors are very physically strong, facing the heavy attack of the destroyer, they are able to withstand it head on, then get up and continue fighting like nothing happened. But they can't play much role in intercepting the destroyer. As for Agent Chin, although he is very powerful, the destroyer is a super armor forged by Odin after all. It is an extremely terrifying weapon in the first place, and the materials used are also very rare and powerful in the universe, not to mention unique to Asgard. Runes. The combination of these creates a destroyer that can really kill gods when God blocks it, and kill Buddha when Buddha blocks it. Therefore, although Agent Chin's attack was sharp, it did not have much effect. Even if the sword falls, it will only push back the destroyer's progress, 
but it will not cause substantial damage to the destroyer, and it will not even leave a trace on the destroyer's body. After several collisions, the Asgard warriors gradually began to struggle due to the destroyer's powerful attacks, and they also suffered some injuries. Although not fatal, it effectively prevented them from getting up to fight again. And Agent Chin, relying on his agile movement, did not suffer any damage, but without the assistance of the Asgard warriors, he was alone and unable to stop the destroyer from heading towards Thor. After fighting for so long, their weapons fell on the destroyer countless times, but unfortunately, the destroyer was still bright and clean, without any traces. Soon, Loki, who controlled the destroyer, understood that after defeating the Asgard warriors, Agent Chin alone could not stop the destroyer. But Agent Chin is as slippery as a loach, and the destroyer cannot knock him down. Therefore, Loki ignored Agent Chin's attacks and allowed the opponent's swords to come out frequently. The swords fell on the destroyer's body and bloomed with bright sparks. He has only one goal in his eyes, and that is to tire you. Seeing that Agent Chin could not stop the destroyer, the shield agents were a little desperate, but they still took out their weapons and attacked the destroyer. Ignoring these useless efforts, the destroyer quickly passed these mortals, and Thor was already close at hand. Excited in his heart, Loki immediately controlled the destroyer to open his visor while condensing hot energy. Locking Thor, Loki couldn't hide the excitement in his eyes, and he was already saying goodbye in his heart. As for the impact this attack would have on other people around Thor, he didn't care at all, or having these people buried with him could be considered Loki's favor to Thor. Although Loki was cold-blooded and ruthless, after experiencing a few days of mortal life and losing his unparalleled power, Thor gained a new understanding and began to understand what his father once told him. He also gradually understood the qualities that a king should have. Facing the destroyer who was already close at hand, Thor felt extremely calm at the moment. Since he is bound to die, then don't involve these other people. They are all good people and should not be killed because of themselves. Loki, Thor stopped, turned around and shouted to the destroyer, and walked towards the destroyer step by step. Loki was a little stunned by Thor's actions. He didn't know what this single-minded guy was thinking. Staring at the energy condensed in the destroyer's visor, Thor was fearless, Loki. You are already the king of Asgard. You have got what you want. As a king, you can't add more killings. These people are all innocent, and I am willing to sacrifice my own life in exchange for the safety of these people. After hearing Thor's words, Loki fell silent. The excitement on his face had faded, and his eyes were filled with confusion as to what he was thinking. On Earth, the destroyer gradually stopped condensing energy, stared deeply at Thor, and then slowly turned around. A smile appeared on Saul's face. He thought Loki had figured it out, took into account the brotherhood between the two, and gave up his intention to kill him. I knew it, Loki, you and I are brothers. Before he could finish his happy words, the destroyer suddenly turned around and punched Thor. How could Thor, who was just a mortal now, be able to withstand a blow? He flew backwards ten meters, and then fell heavily to the ground, covered with scars and losing consciousness. A smile of successful mischief appeared on Loki's face, do you really think I will let you go? Jane ran to Thor in panic and checked his vital signs. But the result is that Thor is already in a state of exhaling more air and less inhaling. Even if he is treated in time, he may not be able to save him from this dying state, let alone now. This environment simply cannot meet the standards of first aid. For a moment, everyone was discouraged and saddened, Thor was going to die. Loki also noticed Thor's state, and thinking that he was bound to die, he controlled the destroyer to turn around and prepare to leave. But at this moment, an accident happened again. With the roar of thunder, the originally quiet Mjolnir suddenly flew over from a distance and landed on Thor. As the thunder exploded, Jane was thrown backward by the powerful energy. A big hand held Jane in his arms, and Jane looked in panic, only to see that Thor, who had regained his divine power at the moment and put on his own armor, was in high spirits. New York, Harlem. Luffy had used all his means at the moment, but facing abomination, whose strength, endurance and recovery were still at their peak, his physical strength had been exhausted too much. Especially the rapid consumption of physical strength and the pressure on the body caused by entering the second gear. Luffy's strength at the moment is not enough to use this state for a long time. Moreover, 
because of using the second gear, Luffy could already feel his movements starting to stiffen, and it was obvious that the side effects of the second gear were beginning to appear. In this situation of ebb and flow, Luffy has been in danger one after another. Ha 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 ha, monkey in a straw hat, keep dancing. Keep dancing and show me. Why are your movements getting slower and slower? Hatred laughed crazily, but at the same time, he still didn't stop moving, constantly greeting Luffy with his fists and elbows. Although being a rubber man is immune to most bludgeoning damage, at the moment Luffy consumes a lot of physical strength, and the power of his hateful fists is getting stronger and stronger for some unknown reason. This made Luffy feel more and more difficult. When the punch landed on his body, he also felt severe pain. Finally, hatred of cruelty laughed, stretched out his elbow bone spur, and stabbed Luffy's chest in cold blood. If this hit really hits, it will definitely give Luffy a heart-wrenching moment. The top of the Stark building is being transformed into Tony's laboratory. Although it is not yet completed, a lot of equipment has been placed here. The battles in Harlem, New York, and New Mexico have been monitored through JARVIS. Over in New Mexico, through Stark's surveillance satellite, he saw the oppression caused by the arrival of the destroyer. Although he was anxious, he was beyond his reach. Moreover, the situation there did not seem very dangerous. After all, so far, none of the important casualties were serious. As for Thor, if Thor dies, it will cause interstellar disputes, Tony can't do anything about it, after all, the destroyer is too perverted. He saw the powerful attack ability of Agent Chin and the powerful strength of the Asgard warriors. But facing the attack of these people, the destroyer was unscathed. Therefore, Tony can only leave the situation there to fate, hoping that there will be a good ending in the end. As for Harlem, Luffy and the others were led here by Tony to deal with abomination. Originally, in his opinion, if Luffy and others went together, they might be able to deal with abomination or contain abomination. After he successfully synthesized the new energy, they would go to support him. I just didn't expect that the brain circuits of these pirates were too special, and they should obviously attack together, without giving abomination a chance to fight back. But because of Luffy's identity as captain, they sat back and watched Luffy and Abomination have a one-on-one -on -one duel. Although Luffy had the upper hand at first, Luffy, an idiot, exposed his weakness and was instead targeted with hatred. Even if he entered second gear later and reversed the offensive, as Tony, who helped Luffy develop second gear, he knew best how much burden this simulated pump machine would exert on the body to accelerate the blood. After all, with the assistance of JARVIS, Tony has an extremely detailed data sheet in his hands. Moreover, if this state is used frequently, it will also reduce the lifespan. After all, human cells have a limited number of proliferations, which accelerates blood flow and puts huge pressure on the body, which will greatly reduce the survival time of cells. This is also the reason why Luffy feels his body getting stiffer and stiffer later on, because the new cells have not completely replaced the dead cells, but the ability of the cells that are not dead to carry nutrients has been greatly reduced due to overload work, and the body's ability to carry nutrients has been greatly reduced. When you are tired, you will rebel against the orders of your brain. This is an objective fact and cannot be done just by the supervisor if he wants to. Seeing that Luffy was already losing ground on the screen, Tony could only look anxiously at the progress of synthesizing new elements. He rushed to the company for the relic left by his father. None of the S.H.I.E.L.D. researchers thought that Howard Stark really left behind some advanced technology, but it was not among the pile of relics. As one of the founders of S.H.I.E.L.D., Howard deeply understands the consequences of leaving his relics in S.H.I.E.L.D. Therefore, these are only an insignificant part of what he left behind. At most, they are just another key inside. But only he and Tony, the father and son, can understand this key. Others don't even know that this key exists, and they can't detect it. Tony ignored the key for a while because of one incident after another. It wasn't until he felt that the energy supply of his WeChat arc reactor was getting less and less and he suddenly reacted that he remembered the key. In the videotape left by Howard, he once told the camera that Tony was his greatest creation. This actually has two meanings. The first level is the superficial meaning. Howard loves Tony very much, but as a playboy who has studied science all his life, he is not able to handle the atmosphere between father and son very well, so it caused many misunderstandings. 
The second floor is the Stark Industrial Expo model behind Howard. It was a brand new element discovered by Howard. Unfortunately, due to the factors of the times, Howard could not synthesize it. Moreover, because this thing was too important and could not be obtained by others, he used this hidden in a way. He believes that his children can understand his ideas and successfully synthesize them. Antony has indeed lived up to expectations. He understands Howard's idea and is synthesizing this new element. According to JARVIS's detection, the energy contained in this new element is clean and pollution-free, and its energy level is more than a hundred times higher than the palladium element currently used by Tony. Once he masters this element, he can perfectly bring out the performance of his steel battle suit, and even develop a steel battle suit with superior performance, and he no longer needs to consider energy issues. Hurry, 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 he kept mumbling that Abomination's strength was far beyond his imagination, and the Straw Hat Pirate's choice also surprised him. Now that Luffy was even more in danger, Tony just wanted to teleport to him immediately and intercept the hateful attack. Harlem, Luffy at the moment his whole body was stiff and he couldn't move at all. Seeing the bone spurs so close at hand, Luffy felt helpless. However, how could the rest of the Straw Hats watch their captain die like this? When, the two swords crossed and intercepted in front of the bone spur. Zoro used both hands to block this fatal blow for Luffy. Ha, huh, another monkey came out. Hatred was stopped and attacked, which made him feel extremely angry. However, at this moment, a foot wearing leather shoes appeared next to his face. Boom, this kick was powerful and heavy, kicking Abomination to the side. Sanji fell from the air with a cigarette in his mouth. I told you, an ugly fool like you, to stop scaring people. Hateful and angry, he got up from the ground, his eyes were bloodshot, and people kept appearing to stop him again and again. He just wants to defeat Hulk and prove himself, why can't he always do it? Roar, the anger made Abomination almost lose his mind, and at the same time, his power became stronger under the anger. However, this is not a one-on-one -on -one battle at this moment. Must kill Firestar, something flew through the air, and the next moment, the face of hatred exploded. Although the damage was not high, because he was hit by a hateful eye, he covered his face in pain. Although he could recover, the pain could not be shielded. He actually attacked a weak spot like the eyes. For the first time, he felt the hatred for bad means. You all deserve to die. Hatred roared angrily and let go of the hand covering his face. At the moment, his face was intact as before. Jumping up, Hate's huge body stepped towards Luffy. He believed that as long as he attacked this immobile guy, these people would appear in front of him. However, everyone acted extremely calmly towards the hateful attack, as if they were not worried about Luffy. This is definitely not because they don't care about Luffy's safety, but because they trust their partners. Therefore, they believe that someone will save Luffy, and they just need to prepare an attack on Abomination. Sure enough, a huge and thick body, like a second Abomination-like monster, suddenly rushed out, knocking the Abomination in the air away with one impact. What, Hulk? Abomination just vaguely saw a monster of huge amounts. He thought it was Hulk, but there seemed to be something wrong with the color of the monster. He stood up from the ground and looked forward, only to see a human-like monster covered in hair and bulging muscles staring at him coldly. Where did this monster appear from? However, the current situation did not allow him to think at all. Because Zoro and Sanji were already holding knives in both hands, with a knife still in their mouths, and the other was shooting towards him with sparks on their feet. Santo Ryu Ghost Slayer Shoru shoot. Hatred immediately crossed his arms to defend against the sudden attack in front of him, and withstood Zoro and Sanji's attacks. Unlike Luffy, Zoro's own strength is originally very powerful, and he is also blessed with weapons. The sharp knife can even cut through the skin of the abomination, causing him to feel pain. But Sanji always targets the weak points of the human body, like a precise butcher's knife, able to launch the most powerful attack from the weak point. Moreover, these two people are different from Luffy, who is straightforward. They both have rich combat experience and fighting skills. They hate being unable to figure out their routines for a while, so they don't perform very well for the time being. As for Luffy, hatred saw him being sent to a safe place behind by a series of arms growing from the ground. They are all a group of weird monsters with abilities. 
Just after he expressed this emotion, Chopper's human form had already carried powerful power and cooperated with Zoro and Sanji to blast towards Abomination. The three of them joined forces and actually made Abomination feel aggrieved. The attacks of these three guys look extremely fierce, but in fact their power is still not as good as Luffy's strength after the second gear. However, their tacit cooperation makes Abomination always fall into decline. Asshole, you guys are jumping around like flies, it's so annoying. Finally, roaring with unbearable hatred, he forcibly accepted the attacks of Zoro and Sanji, grabbed Chopper's head, and then smashed it into the ground. Ah, Chopper yelled in pain. This time, it caused a lot of damage to him. The sudden change shocked others around them. Didn't they already have the upper hand? Why did the offensive suddenly reverse? Abomination was not surprised. After he eliminated Chopper, he punched and kicked him again, causing Zoro and Sanji to follow in Chopper's footsteps in an instant. Although they were not completely eliminated, within a short period of time, the three of them were unable to recover. As for other people, they are even less likely to be hated opponents. Since then, the Straw Hats have been completely defeated. In the distance, Banner saw the battle situation reaching this point, feeling the restlessness in his body, and he suddenly sighed. Even a guy like Chopper, who looks like a pet, has taken action to fight, and the opponent is coming for him. Why should he hide here with peace of mind? Although he was injected with the antidote developed by Dr. Lan, after a few hours, Banner has found that the originally calm transformation in his body has become restless again. In other words, the antidote didn't work. He could only suppress the mutation for a while, rather than cure it completely. Let me go, he is looking for me. Banner suddenly spoke, causing everyone around him to look at him. Betty quickly grabbed Banner. Bruce, you have become an ordinary person, you will die if you do this. General Ross stared deeply at Banner. The enemy is the one who knows your existence best, so he immediately reacted, the antidote is useless. Banner noticed General Ross's eyes and nodded without concealment. Although it has been suppressed for a few hours, it has now begun to appear in my body again. General Ross is caught in a battle between heaven and man at this moment. On the one hand, he wants Banner to come forward to solve this crisis. After all, the matter was too big. In just a few hours, the losses had been too tragic, and the impact was too far-reaching. But on the other hand, now is the best opportunity to seize Banner. Although the antidote is useless, it obviously still has a suppressive effect on him, which means that now is the time when Hulk is at his weakest. And if this opportunity is lost, General Ross doesn't know if there will be a second time. After thinking for a moment, General Ross made the right decision, give him a helicopter. When Betty saw that the matter had come to an end, she quickly took Banner's hand and looked at him silently. But Banner just gave Betty a smile and walked towards the helicopter. Betty wanted to catch up, but was stopped by General Ross. This matter will eventually have an outcome. Banner went to face the hatred without hesitation. Banner was already filled with rage in his heart for hating his unscrupulous destruction of everything and the killing he caused. Previously, he was limited by the medicine given by Dr. Lan, which suppressed his mutations. Now, the medicine has begun to fail, and he no longer suppresses his inner anger. Naturally, Hulk falls from the sky. Hulk, attack. After jumping out of the helicopter, all the clothes on Banner's body were ripped apart by the swollen muscles. By the time he hit the ground hard, Hulk's angry eyes had already appeared in front of his eyes. Seeing Hulk appear, Hatred grinned widely, Hulk, you finally stopped being such a turtle. Hulk yelled angrily, Hulk, I'm going to destroy you. Then come on. Without saying too much, the two of them greeted each other and then rushed towards each other. Boom, boom, boom. The two monsters were just punching and kicking each other in the ruins, going straight down with no fighting skills at all. The fight was inseparable and inextricable. Although the two were evenly matched at the beginning, soon, because the medicine in Hulk's body had not been completely decomposed, his overall quality was still much worse than that of hate. Especially when Abomination started to use fighting skills, Hulk, as a mutated existence of Banner, had learned martial arts for a period of time, but those were only used to calm Banner's heart, and almost none of them could be used in actual combat. As a scientist, Banner does not have strong fighting skills. So, soon, Hulk gradually began to fall into a disadvantage. 
Abomination has no mercy for Hulk's weakening strength. Instead, his actions become more and more brutal, and his moves become more and more cruel. Punch after punch hit various parts of Hulk's body, and the attacks continued without stopping. But Hulk could only passively withstand the hateful attack. He was beaten and staggered, with stars in his eyes. There were many bruises on his body, and blood overflowed from the corner of his mouth. He looked seriously injured. Bruce, in the distance, Betty covered her mouth with her hands, looking at Hulk in a miserable state with tears streaming down her face. General Ross's eyes were solemn at the moment, even though he and Banner were not fighting each other, and he also coveted Hulk. But compared to the evil abomination, General Ross still hopes that Hulk can defeat him. However, it is obvious that the influence of Dr. Land's medicine is still a bit large, and Hulk cannot show his true strength at all, which is why he is losing ground. The live broadcast of the TV station also made countless people feel despair. After all, since the emergence of Abomination, whether it is the massacre of the army, the destruction of the city, or the crushing of the street heroes, it has been overwhelming and invincible. Until the emergence of the Straw Hats, although almost everyone did not know who these young people were or where they came from, they at least had a stage of suppressing hatred and gave countless people a glimmer of hope. But this dawn did not last long, and was soon broken by hatred. The complete defeat of the Straw Hats almost made everyone despair, almost thinking that the end of the world was coming. Until the appearance of Hulk, a destroyer with a bad image in the eyes of the public and a hateful opponent, everyone once again lit up the light of hope. However, soon, Hulk, who had passed the novice protection period, finally entered his period of weakness. Under the hatred of such a monster with both strength and skill, the light of hope dimmed again. The thoughts of others cannot affect the two people in the battle. Hatred laughs cruelly and constantly beats Hulk, the existence that has brought him so much humiliation. Abomination punched Hulk in the stomach, sending him flying dozens of meters again. Ha 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 ha, come on, show me how powerful you are again. Faced with the provocation of the abomination, Hulk was extremely angry. He tore the car next to him in half, and then held it in his hands as if wearing two fist gloves. With the blessing of weapons, Hulk would kill the abomination rushing towards him. Destroy with one punch. Immediately afterwards, Hulk gained the upper hand and hit Abomination with several punches before he could react. Even the body of the car in his hand was torn apart by the continuous punches and completely shattered to the ground. With no weapon in his hand, Hulk hammered the Abomination to the ground, and then rode on the opponent to launch a set of fierce attacks. Abomination's entire body sank into the ground, and Hulk's sudden increase in strength caught him off guard. After Hulk stopped with some breathlessness, he turned his head and spat out a mouthful of blood, staring at Hulk with eyes filled with hatred. I saw Hulk's angry eyes shining with a faint green light, and his right fist began to accumulate strength. Hatred sarcastically said, is this all you have? The green light shining brighter in Hulk's eyes, ah! As he roared, the muscles all over Hulk's body seemed to have grown in size, and he punched hard. Hatred saw the right moment and kicked him out at the same time. Hulk's fist missed, but Abomination kicked him across the street, and then smashed into the house at the end of the street. Abomination quickly ran over and lay down in the big hole left by Hulk on the wall, preparing to attack Hulk. A huge amount of stone flew out of the cave with a whistling sound. Before Abomination could react, he was immediately confused. Huge amounts of force made Abomination's hands soften, and he hit the ground heavily from the wall. Roar! Hulk ran out of the hole with green eyes shining, then jumped up and hit the abomination lying on the ground hard. Hulk, smash it. Seeing that the situation was not good, abomination rolled on the spot and avoided Hulk's fierce attack. But huge amounts of shockwave blew the hatred outwards and rolled away. Hatred just got up from the ground and shook his dizzy head, but he only felt pain on his face, his teeth flew out in an instant, and he was knocked to the ground again. Roar, a roar sounded in his ears, and Abomination struggled to support his body, watching a hulk that was even larger than before appear in front of him. And that huge fist is constantly enlarging in his eyes. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. One punch, one punch, and another punch. Hulk seemed to have no physical limitations at this moment, and his heavy fists were constantly hitting the Abomination. Gradually, the ground was torn apart, and Abomination's body sank deep into the earth. 
It wasn't until hatred seemed to have made no sound that Hulk slowly stopped his hand, and the green light in his eyes gradually faded away. At this moment, he seemed to feel tired, breathed heavily, and sat down next to him. Win, win, we win. Hulk defeated the abomination. Hulk saved the world. Along with the excited shouting of the frontline reporters of the TV station, all the viewers in front of the TV also cheered. After hours of fighting, the despair brought by hatred is so oppressive. Even in the face of successive heroes, hatred is so despairing, and the suppression of strength almost makes everyone think that the end of the world has occurred. But Hulk stood up and defeated Abomination by himself, protecting the safety of the world. However, sometimes you can't do things like open champagne at halftime, especially when hatred has not been clearly defeated, and you can't announce the result in advance. Hulk, who was just resting, didn't notice that the ground behind him suddenly rose. Then, with the sound of the ground tearing apart, a giant hand full of scars stretched out from the ground like a living corpse resurrected. A sudden scene interrupted everyone's excitement, and Hulk was also startled by the movement behind him and quickly turned his head to look. Before he could see what was happening behind him, a big hand full of scars and blood pressed down on Hulk's face. So that's what happened, this kind of power can be enhanced. A hateful voice appeared in Hulk's ears, and then he felt a strong force grabbing his head and throwing him out. Hulk got up from the ground and looked at his attacker angrily. Under everyone's shocked gazes, green energy surged from Abomination's body, and his body's gamma value continued to rise. Along with these changes, Abomination's body is also undergoing huge amounts of changes. The wounds on the body were covered with ferocious scales, the whole body was covered with hard horn, and the ears turned into something similar to fish fins, making the abomination look more like a sea creature. Power, ha 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 ha, power, hatred laughed cheerfully, clenched his hands and raised his hands high, feeling the constant power generated in his body, as well as the less and less obvious fatigue, which made hatred understand that he had become a fighting machine that never tired. He has a body as strong as the Hulk, scales as hard as iron, which can greatly reduce fatigue, plus the powerful fighting skills possessed by the abomination. He looked at Hulk with hatred and evil, he wanted to take revenge for being suppressed and beaten before. The second game. Dot has begun. Amid laughter, abomination knocked down Hulk faster, and then his fists increased in speed, constantly attacking Hulk, as if returning all the previous attacks Hulk had made on him. Roar. Hulk became angry again, the green light in his eyes shone again, and his power increased to another level. After forcibly enduring Abomination's violent attack, Hulk roared and punched Abomination in the face. But this time, Hatred didn't intend to be hard. He tilted his head to avoid Hulk's direct attack, then reached out to hold Hulk's outstretched arm, and ducked down, moving from Hulk's armpit to Hulk's back. And the arm held by Hatred was also locked behind his back by Hatred in due time. The joints were locked, Hulk screamed in pain, and his body slumped uncontrollably. Abomination stretched out his foot and kicked Hulk, hitting the leg joint, causing Hulk to kneel to the ground. Abomination stretched out his foot and stepped on Hulk's back, grabbed Hulk's arms with both hands, and directly subdued Hulk to the ground. An extremely coherent set of joint skills locked Hulk's offensive, leaving Hulk with no brute force at the moment and unable to display it. Asterisk. In this regard, Hulk has no choice but to be incompetent and furious. After all, he can only go straight, so there is no way to break this kind of subduement. Ha 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 ha, Hulk, you are no match for me. I am the most powerful in the world. The arrogant and proud hatred laughed wildly. He was excited and excited that he had won the first place in the world. However, an impact suddenly hit his face, and his body fell back in disgust at being hit by this sudden attack. Hulk seized the opportunity and immediately stood up from the ground, then broke away from the blockade of hatred, quickly ran to the side and rubbed his joints, moving them to allow them to recover quickly. Hatred was caught off guard by this attack, and at the same time, the burning pain on his face also made him feel extremely. Anger. One by one, they always appeared when he was most proud, which made him feel insulted by his self-concealed invincible power. Who? Abomination roared and looked around trying to find the enemy who attacked him. Aha, is this the sea witch who escaped from the aquarium? How can you still be so alive after being away from the sea for so long? A frivolous voice sounded in the air, and Hatred looked up, 
only to see Iron Man Didi Zhao wearing a brand new steel battle suit suspended in the air. Hatred glared at Iron Man in the air, Iron Man, Stark. Do you want to join in too? Tony put away his frivolous attitude. You have caused so much casualties and losses, do you think I will stand by and watch? Abominable smiled cruelly and lowered his body slightly, then let you see what real power is. It is not something that your little iron skin can match. With a roar, Abomination leapt high into the sky and pounced towards Iron Man in the air. Iron Man ducked out of the way nimbly, then stretched out his palm to face the hatred, let's see my new technology. As a green beam of light erupted from his palm, Abomination quickly raised his hand to block it. Wow, he cried out in pain. The hatred was not repulsed. Instead, the area on his arm that blocked the green beam was scorched black, and there was even a deep wound with bone visible. Seeing the effect of this blow, Tony was also surprised. The power of mega particles is so powerful. As someone who paid close attention to the battle, Tony knew very well how powerful Abomination's physique was, and after a round of strengthening, it was self evident that Abomination's physical strength was self evident. But with such a powerful body, the mega particles that Tony copied from the Forum of Scientists in the Sky can actually break through the defense of hatred. This blow made Abomination feel afraid of Iron Man. After all, ordinary enemies couldn't break his defense at all, so his arrogance made him arrogant. But facing an enemy who can break through his defenses, if he is not serious, he may experience the scene where Hulk beat him violently again. Iron Man. As a former military special forces soldier, Hatred has a deep understanding of Stark's weapons. Since Stark Industries closed its weapons department, the military has never had contact with Stark Industries' weapons. Instead, it uses weapons from other companies. The best of them, Hammer Industries, is even worse than Stark Industries. So, it's very clear to Abomination just how reliable and powerful Stark's weapons are. But now, Stark, who announced that he would no longer manufacture weapons, actually created more powerful weapons. This kind of weapon gives the abomination the feeling that it is like those weapons in science fiction movies that only civilizations that have reached the interstellar level have. Before he evolved, he was able to withstand bullets and artillery attacks. Now he is even more confident that he has no fear even in the face of missiles. However, with such a strong defense, when faced with a ray attack from Stark, he was completely defeated, which is enough to see how much shock this ray of radiation brought to abomination. Although Iron Man in the air was shocked by the power of the weapon in his hand, he had some psychological preparation, so he was not too shocked. Seeing the solemn look on Hatred's face was in sharp contrast to his previous invincible arrogance, which made Tony very amused. Aha, what happened to our ugly sea witch? Why don't you continue to hold your belly and laugh? Is it because the jokes in your mind have made you immune? Or, after seeing your serious Iron Man father, you want to act like a good baby. Tony's venomous words were constantly directed at Hatred. Hatred, who was already affected by the mutation, after hearing Iron Man's trash talk to him one after another, his original vigilance was replaced by anger. Iron Man, you're just a bug flying around. Hatred roared, picked up a car from the side and threw it into the air. Iron Man nimbly dodged the attack, but the next moment, Abomination had jumped in front of him. A hideous-looking monster suddenly appeared in front of him, and Tony couldn't help being frightened. Boom, with one punch, Iron Man couldn't be handsome for more than three seconds. He was hit hard into the building on the ground like a volleyball, enjoying the same treatment as Hulk before. After Abomination fell to the ground, it chased Iron Man without stopping. Tony looked at the detection system projected in front of him and found that the damage to the entire machine was only 1%, which made him feel relieved. After all, it is easy to improve a weapon, but if the entire machine body is to be improved, it needs to reach an extremely high level in all aspects. Now that he has withstood the angry blow of abomination, Tony feels that although there is still potential for improvement, for now, it is enough to deal with monsters like abomination. A red warning lighted up in front of him. Tony looked down and saw that Abomination had already crashed through the wall and rushed towards him. J-A-R-V-I-S, this place is too inconspicuous. Go outside and show everyone how powerful Iron Man is. Iron Man's right arm began to change continuously. In the blink of an eye, 
his right fist became more than three times larger, completely asymmetrical to Iron Man's body shape. Hex charge. The right fist suddenly spurted out two rapid air streams, bringing up a burst of white smoke. At the same time, Iron Man's feet were also advancing rapidly. In an instant, a red gold stream of light flashed past the dimly lit house. Abomination was approaching Iron Man, but the next moment, his vision blurred, and he only felt a pain in his chest. The already protruding bones made a creaking sound, and his entire huge body was instantly affected by this terrifying power. House launched. Whoosh boom. Hate goes as quickly as it comes. Iron Man was suspended on the ground, maintaining a fist-pumping posture, while Abomination indeed brought a line of smoke and dust heavily into the building opposite. After several severe blows to the buildings, finally, the buildings in the entire block became dilapidated and crumbling. This street was completely destroyed. It could not be repaired and could only be rebuilt. Hate became angry with shame, and felt a bone-deep pain in his chest. He only felt humiliation and humiliation. Time and time again he thought he was sure of victory, time and time again he thought he was already number one in the world, but time and time again someone rushed out and humiliatingly attacked him. Hatred at this moment CGBE, could not contain the anger in his heart at all, he wanted to destroy everything, he wanted to destroy everything. In the extreme anger, reason was finally destroyed by gamma rays, and hatred at the moment has completely turned into a monster that has no reason and only knows destruction. Boom 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 boom. Driven by anger, hatred was destroying without scruple, and the first one to bear the brunt was the dilapidated building that he was smashed into. Completely ignoring that he was also in the building, Hatred only knew how to destroy everything in sight. As the building collapsed completely, endless smoke and dust flew into the air. And in the thick smoke and dust, the eyes of Hatred were completely covered by green energy, the face was irrational and crazy, the mouth was split and full of fangs, and the mouth was constantly dripping and oozing towards the ground, saliva. Roar, roaring like a beast, the gamma energy in abomination rioted again. Tony looked at the results from the scanning system in front of him, this guy won't be overwhelmed by this violent energy. J-A-R-V-I-S, sir, the gamma energy in Abomination's body is constantly rising and will cause radiation effects to the surroundings. Tony's eyes narrowed, we can't let the hatred continue to increase like this. It's just that the leak can be solved easily. If this guy suddenly explodes, the impact will be too great. Having said that, Iron Man instantly flew towards Abomination, and at the same time, the beam ray in his hand kept shooting towards Abomination. These beam rays can offset the gamma energy and limit the rapid rise of gamma energy in the Abomination body. Sir, this can only alleviate the increase in gamma energy, but it cannot prevent it. J-A-R-V-I-S gave a definite answer. Tony shouted. I definitely know, so now turn on the energy absorption device, absorb the surrounding gamma energy, and then convert it. J-A-R-V-I-S, the energy absorption device has been opened and is being converted simultaneously. Tony looked at the energy remaining given by the detection system. Although the beam ray in his hand was still shooting at abomination uninterrupted, the energy remaining was constantly rising. Only three minutes have passed, and Iron Man's energy has reached 180%. When had Tony ever fought with so much energy? A smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. J-A-R-V-I-S, focus the energy on your chest and activate the high-energy pulse cannon. As the energy gathered, Iron Man moved his hands closer and began shapeshifting to reassemble. Soon, a thick muzzle floated at the energy core of his chest. Let's try the power of this move. Following Tony's command, the energy core in his chest suddenly shot out with surging blue energy. When this blue energy passed through the muzzle in front, it seemed to have been blessed by something, and turned into scarlet energy, and a more powerful high-energy pulse cannon was ejected from the thick muzzle. Boom! The power of this cannon directly dispelled the darkness of the night, illuminating the surrounding area with a blood-like red color. The people watching were stunned and their brains went blank. In the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, Director Fury was stunned for a while when he saw the terrifying attack sprayed by Iron Man, and then quickly asked loudly, what is the energy level of this attack? The shield agent below suddenly woke up when he heard the director's voice. He immediately operated on the computer, and then looked at the test results, his eyes filled with disbelief. Director. Dot the energy level. Dot has reached level 8. 
Director Fury's already dark face turned even darker. The energy level of level 8 is already equivalent to a small yield nuclear bomb. He can already imagine how the world will change dramatically after tonight. Stark, although you, father and son, are both unimaginable geniuses, your troublemaking ability is equal to your genius. Although he agrees with Tony's genius, Director Fury still has some doubts about the weapons Iron Man is releasing. After all, it can be seen from the situation a few months ago that Wani's weapon design cannot show such a leaping improvement. This kind of pure energy attack can be equivalent to a small yield nuclear bomb, something that breaks the rules. According to common sense, it is not something that Tony can design now. Although it is not ruled out that Tony has a sudden inspiration and has made a major breakthrough, but correspondingly, materials that can withstand such a terrifying energy level are not capable of being carried by most conventional materials at present. Although Tony also purchased some special materials, those materials simply cannot support the consumables of such a large weapon, not to mention the random shapeshifting and reassembly function of the body displayed by Iron Man. The technological content represented by this is higher than that of high energy pulse. The cannon is even more unimaginable. So, could it be that Tony got something or encountered something? Director Ferui didn't show much of this. After all, people who can think of it don't need to be reminded. Director Ferui can't remind people who can't think of it. All he has to do is confirm this conjecture himself. The more people who know, the better things get more troublesome. Tony didn't know what was happening in the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. At the moment, he was just activating the high-energy pulse cannon with all his strength to offset the increasing gamma energy of abomination. Seeing that although it was still absorbing the surrounding gamma energy as a supplementary energy reserve, the consumption was still decreasing, Tony was also a little worried, doesn't this monster have a bottom line for the gamma energy he possesses? When Tony was anxious, a roar suddenly appeared next to him, and then a huge green figure slapped him from the side. Looking closely, it turned out that Hulk had regained his composure and struck at the irrational abomination. Hulk, smash it! A punch hit abomination's head hard, causing him to burst out of gamma energy for an instant, and then he was thrown to the ground by Hulk. The action of erupting gamma energy also stopped immediately. Hulk angrily hit abomination. With each punch, a lot of gamma energy shot out from Abomination, which was then absorbed by the angry Hulk. Seeing this scene, Iron Man immediately stopped attacking. Looking at the test results given by JARVIS, he couldn't understand it at all. However, after Hulk absorbed the gamma energy, there was no sign of riot. On the contrary, the gamma energy could bring positive feedback to Hulk, making Hulk larger and more powerful. As Hulk absorbed more and more gamma energy from Abomination, Abomination became weaker and weaker. In the end, Hulk lifted Abomination up, threw it into the air, and punched Abomination in the head. Hate rolled his eyes, and his entire huge body fell to the ground like garbage, unable to get up again. Hulk, at the moment it has become bigger at least. Half of Hulk, with green eyes shining, hands clenched in the air, and an angry face shouting his name. Tony drove the steel battle suit and landed next to Abomination. Seeing that the ferocious monster fell into a coma, he breathed a sigh of relief. Although I only caught up to the last ending, the final result was still good. When the morning sun rises from the horizon, Hulk stands on the ruins with his fists raised high, making people seem to see a berserker-like hero rising. Two days have passed since the last battle ended. Because Hulk saved the world, the wanted order for Banner was naturally removed. Banner was invited by Tony to join Stark Industries, naturally to facilitate their actions together. After this incident, Banner is no longer so resistant to Hulk. When he has nothing to do, he will calm down and communicate with Hulk. The Straw Hats all have their own injuries, especially the main ones, whose injuries are even more frightening. Fortunately, their physiques were very strong. After adequate rest and nutrition, most of their horrific injuries had recovered in two days. Luffy, who had recovered, was even more clamoring to find Crocodile. But unfortunately, Crocodile has disappeared since he appeared in New Mexico two days ago. No one knows where he is. Moreover, the most important thing at the moment is how Luffy and the others can return to their own world. Until a space portal with countless sparks suddenly appeared in front of everyone, Sorcerer Supreme appeared with Agent Chin and everyone from Baroque Works. 
In the realm of nothingness, Kana looked at the earth. Under the gaze of Tony and others, when Luffy and others returned to their own world with Crocodile and others whose power had been blocked, he noticed a spirit. The energy followed Luffy and others to the continent he created. I've been waiting for you to come. Shen Zawu smiled. For him, although the purpose is to break away from the Marvel multi-universe, there are not many moments when he needs to exert force in this process. He only needs to pry a little at the key nodes. You can make things move towards the results you need. As for how to get the results you want, that doesn't matter. Therefore, for Shen Zawu, he created the existences in his memory, created corresponding powers, gave these existences corresponding memories, and even gave them corresponding souls. He just put these existences into the real dimension, and then stopped caring about their actions. He will not control the thoughts of these people, let alone the behavior of these people. He is like a chess player. He puts in the chess piece and prepares to put in the second chess piece. As for what kind of role a chess piece can play, that is all limited by your own chess ability as a chess player, not what kind of role a chess piece can play. Under such a demand, the direction of the chess pieces is like watching a real-life TV drama about fandom. This kind of wonderful fun was what he needed to kill boredom in his endless years. As long as the route does not deviate, then these unknown developments are the greatest fun. Occasional deviations can also make Shenzi feel somewhat involved. Just like it is now. Through the backhand he left behind, the Sorcerer Supreme Ancient One devoted his spiritual power to the continent he created for the pirate world, wanting to explore the reality of the other world. Since Ancient One has this idea, God Zewu naturally wants to show him something real. As Kami Zewu was inspired, the chaos in the realm of nothingness immediately began to change, and then an illusory world of pirates replaced the chaos. Although it is illusory, for the time being, especially to the Ancient One, it is real. The spirit of the Ancient One followed Luffy and others into the sea, feeling the orangutan wind and humidity in the air, and he walked in this world. A single thought of the spirit can change the world. The spirit of the Ancient One traveled around in this world full of dreams and chaos. This world has incredible devil fruits, domineering power that taps into the human body, extraordinary swordsmanship, super ancient weapons that can destroy heaven and earth, and super ancient civilizations that only have a few words. This is a world that is completely different from the earth. The civilizations in this world are diverse and not unified. The many races in this world are like a fantasy world. The sense of reality this world brought to him, as well as the different rules in the universe, made him understand that this was not the original world, but another independent universe. It turns out that the world is so huge. There is not only a parallel world outside the world, but also a completely different other world. Just when Ancient One was feeling it, an inexplicable feeling made him suddenly feel uncomfortable, and then he saw a blur in front of his eyes, and his spirit had returned to his body. But the Ancient One, who had taken back this spirit, found that he had no memory of this spirit at all, as if that memory had been erased, but he clearly felt the feelings transmitted to him by the spirit. And this special feeling made Ancient One immediately believe in the existence of Otherworld. As for the disappeared memory, he understood that he must have crossed the world in an illegal way and was expelled back by a stable existence similar to himself. In the realm of nothingness, after erasing the mental memory of the Ancient One and sending it back, he smiled knowingly as he watched the Ancient One's guess gradually fade away. The more you do, the more you will be exposed. Sometimes, if there is enough blank space, then the imagination can make all falsehoods become true. But I have to say that Shen Zewu felt that the scenes that took place in the real dimension during this period of time were really interesting. Especially after seeing the steel battle suit made by Iron Man by gathering the science and technology from several worlds, this kind of powerful strength made me even think that even the alien technology shown in the movie could not withstand Iron Man's strength. Attack. And this is only the first and second level forum authority. It will only become more and more fierce in the future, and naturally, the enemies they need to deal with will naturally become more and more powerful. The second act of chaos has ended. Although the development of the entire reality dimension is still developing along the original trajectory of fate, it is obvious that compared with the small impact on fate the first time, this time, the entire fate has happened. Deflect greatly. Sorcerer Supreme Ancient One appeared earlier, and he got to know Tony and others several years in advance. Originally, 
Tony should have been deeply poisoned by palladium during this period and gave up on himself, but because this situation was solved early, Tony performed more brilliantly, and even participated in the battle against the abomination, instead of solving the problem as in his original destiny. After solving his own problems, he finally appeared in front of General Ross and mocked him, and even started to form Avengers with fury. Not to mention Thor's side. Intruding into a crocodile would have an absolutely huge impact, and it is obviously not impossible to extend the impact to Asgard later. When a butterfly flaps its wings, this insignificant airflow will gradually affect the entire world. Continue to prepare for the third intrusion, but before that, God has no intention of giving the earth a rest time and investing in some small intrusions. After all, if he continues to inflict major events on the earth, he must do more and make more mistakes. Leave enough blank space and let them guess on their own, so that they can be convinced to the greatest extent. Naturally, Shen Zewu does not want to rest. He is preparing to show his energy as the Lord of Nothingness to the dimension of reality. As a new Mephista, the Lord of Nothingness also needs to perform some eye-catching operations. For example, on Earth, a little Asian girl got an artifact that he projected onto Earth. Wearing a wristband transformed by an artifact, the little Asian girl is hiding in the Middle East of San Francisco. She extends her little hand to those gangsters or gangsters who want to harm her. The vibrating energy knocked these idiots away. Sky, can you tell me why you want to leave the orphanage? An Asian shield agent wearing combat uniform stopped in front of the little girl. In response to the question of the Asian shield agent in front of her, the little girl Sky raised her palm to face her warily. If you are from the government department, then you should know about this issue. Having experienced the sufferings of the world at a young age, Sky has a maturity that is completely inconsistent with her age. She can take action against those gangsters who want to do evil, but when facing someone who is suspected of being a government department, she cannot take action easily. After all, the nature is completely different. Agent May looked at Sky with calm eyes. I definitely understand that the orphanage is using you as cheap labor to make money. Sky's eyes were a little dim, avoiding the important and taking the easy, you are in the same group with them. Obviously, this welfare home is not as simple as Agent May said on the surface. As a senior agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent May is naturally aware of the problems involved, but the involvement is too deep and she cannot participate in it. Hey, Sky, you should know that you have abilities that are not in line with you, so, I guess. Don't even think about it. Sky yelled angrily, and his hands condensed dangerous vibration energy, causing the surroundings to start shaking. I won't believe you. I have escaped from that hell, and you still you want to take away my power and throw me back to hell. I will never allow this to happen. Seeing that Sky was getting excited, Agent May immediately stretched out her hand to calm down. Hey. Hey, Sky, don't be so excited, be calm, and don't cause too much impact. Roll. Sky didn't even listen to Agent May's words. Although he matured precociously, he was still just a teenager in the end. How could he control his emotions well, especially after he gained great power? Suppression and dissatisfaction will be released. The shock wave instantly knocked Agent May away. Sky's eyes were fierce. Just as he was about to retract his hand and leave, several agents suddenly appeared around her with weapons aimed at her. Sure enough, none of you are good people. Sky was extremely angry, and her emotions aroused the power in her body. Instantly, with her as the center, majestic shock waves spread to all directions. All the surrounding agents were instantly knocked away by the powerful energy, and with Sky standing as the center, the entire ground was overturned. After Sky defeated these agents, he stopped with a cold snort, and the surrounding area immediately returned to calm. She looked around coldly at the agents lying on the ground struggling in pain. A trace of unbearability flashed in her eyes, but she quickly buried it, and then quickly left the place without saying a word. Sky had some idea of what her ability was after many attempts. He can control the power of vibration to emit shock waves. People hit by the shock waves not only have to bear the power of the energy shock, but also the pain caused by the vibration. Sky has no psychological burden on those gangsters and gangsters who do not do good things, because her special living environment makes her very familiar with gangsters and gangsters. But Sky didn't know who these agents were. The kindness in her heart made her afraid that she might accidentally hurt a good person, but for her own safety, she had to do this. 
After Sky left this place that was destroyed by herself, she hid all the way and soon entered a place where Chinese people gathered, Chinatown. Here, surrounded by Chinese people with black hair and black eyes, and the people here are very united, Sky, as an Asian orphan, can be regarded as a fish in water here. After having a nice lunch in a Chinese restaurant, Sky fell into confusion because she had escaped from that orphanage. She had no idea where to go next or how to live. After getting the artifact in her hand, Sky focused on escaping from the orphanage. She didn't want to end up with the tragic ending she saw inadvertently. She wanted to live a good life instead of becoming a guinea pig or a plaything. So in one opportunity, she used ability to knock down the security guards who were supervising her orphans, took a few hundred dollars from their pockets, and left without any hesitation, without even thinking about her future life. Although I still have a few hundred dollars in my pocket, what will happen after I use them up? Looking for a job, but who would hire a teenager like himself? Wandering around in confusion in Chinatown, some kind-hearted people in the roadside shops occasionally saw Sky wandering alone on the street and asked her to go home or stay with her relatives. Although Sky would politely thank him for these kindnesses, he was full of bitterness. Looking at the harmonious and friendly atmosphere around her, peers with parents and friends, and faces full of happy smiles, she was alone. Suddenly, a palpitating feeling of loneliness enveloped her, making her inevitably blush. Tears also kept rolling in his eyes. Lowering her head and wiping her eyes with her hands, she held back her tears. Then she found a tea house and sat down. Now that she was free, she had to make plans for her future life. Growth is sometimes so simple and sudden. Sitting in the tea house, listening to the high-pitched talks of the people around him, Skye's heart actually calmed down inexplicably. At this time, a man walked to the TV and picked up the remote control. The tea boss poured himself a cup of tea. I heard that something big happened over there in New York, and it's being broadcast on TV now. As for the tea boss, other customers around him joked that the boss is a TV fan. As the TV was turned on, the noisy sounds in the tea house suddenly became quiet. Sky's eyes widened as well, unable to believe that such a thing happened in broad daylight. I saw a terrifying monster called, Abomination, standing in the ruins. Facing the army's attack, he did not appear to be injured at all. On the contrary, the soldiers were beaten and retreated. Abomination just yelled for Hulk to come out while wreaking havoc on the surrounding buildings, causing huge amounts of damage. Especially the wailing sounds of people affected by the disaster were frequently heard on TV and constantly reached Sky's ears, making her feel a little afraid of this powerful force. Abomination was still constantly destroying. After completely destroying a block, he found that Hulk did not come out, so he jumped to another block to destroy it. In this way, the hatred spread all the way to Harlem, New York. Many street heroes stood up on the way. Unfortunately, they could still be somewhat effective in dealing with some gangsters and gangsters, but they were no match for this monster. As the street heroes retreated one by one, the military and police could only evacuate the people in the direction of the monster in advance and then allowed the hatred to wreak havoc. Later, as a TV station's helicopter was destroyed by the car wreckage thrown into the sky by the monster, the live broadcast on the TV also disappeared immediately. The anxious customers in the store asked the clerk who controlled the remote control to start changing to other channels. But it is a pity that every channel is like this, and the best ones are at least two blocks away, because it is dangerous to be too close to the monster, and no one is willing to risk their lives, especially if there is already death. Helpless, everyone could only watch the live TV shot from a distance, and then listen to various explanations and comments from the anchors and invited military experts. After a long time, everyone became numb. Although the damage caused by hatred was extremely serious, they were also a little scared, but after all, that was New York, and it was too far away from San Francisco. Slowly, the store began to become noisy again, with everyone and the people around discussing the matter loudly and what impact it would have. Various opinions emerge one after another, and some people worry that if the hatred remains unresolved, it will eventually affect them, and the New York of today will be their future. Some people also say that there is also the famous Iron Man, but he has not come out yet. However, this kind of statement changed as time went by. Almost everyone thought that Iron Man was afraid and did not dare to stop the destruction of hatred. 
At the same time, a trace of despair gradually spread among the crowd towards the invincible hatred. Skye was not involved in these discussions, and, as a child, she had no one around to discuss them with her. She just stared at her hands blankly, looking at the black and gold wrist guards on her wrists. She finally had a profound understanding of the disaster caused by powerful power. Skye suddenly felt an unspeakable sense of fear about the power she possessed. She was afraid that if she lost control in the future and wreaked havoc everywhere like hatred. What will happen? As a kind-hearted child, Skye experienced this kind of blow not long after she gained strength. For her, it was really too cruel. She even began to plan to give up this power, but this power was also the power to protect her. If she gave up, what would happen to her own safety? When her heart was in chaos, a lively voice sounded in her ears, Cool. Is your wristband some kind of magic prop? When you showed up, Dad said you had a magical aura. What? Skye suddenly came back to her senses and looked at the short-haired girl who didn't know when she had reached her side in confusion. The girl looked younger than herself, and she stretched her neck and was close to her. Wristband, looking at it very curiously. Seeing that the other party wanted to reach out and touch him, Sky immediately withdrew his hand and stretched his sleeves to cover the wrist guard, what are you doing? This song is an ordinary decoration. That's all. However, in response to Sky's words, the little girl smiled slyly. Okay, don't be afraid, these people have been attracted by the big man who hates them, and they won't care about what our two children say, just like the dragon just like my uncle never told me not to take part in adventures, adults always think that we need to be protected, which is so boring. Maybe it was because the other person's chattering made Sky feel like a friend, or maybe it was because she was really afraid of being alone and wanted to have personal communication, so Sky started talking to the other person. The magic you just mentioned, what's that about? The little girl looked at Sky in surprise, don't you know? Your wristband is some kind of magic prop, and the magic energy it contains is very powerful. As soon as you walked through the door of the antique store, your father noticed you. Yes. He thought you were the descendant of a certain magic master, so he didn't pay too much attention to it. Sky reached out and touched the wrist guard, and said with some disbelief, You said, this is a magic item. Does magic, really exist? The little girl was even more surprised, but at the same time, there was a hint of adventure in her eyes. You have such a powerful magic prop, but you don't know the existence of magic. Cool, this may be your step into the magical world. How about the key to the door? Why don't you go explore the origin of the wristband, maybe it will be a thrilling adventure. Sky couldn't keep up with the little girl's thoughts. What's so exciting about this kind of adventure? Thrilling, that's danger, right? However, the little girl had no idea about Sky's mature thoughts. She asked excitedly, where did your wristband come from? Let's go look for it and see if there are any other interesting things. Looking at the little girl's excited smile, Sky finally. Yu understands that this little girl is a little guy who is not afraid of anything. She has no idea how dangerous this world is. Sky shook his head and said, This wristband appeared beside me accompanied by a meteor. I didn't find it somewhere, and I don't want to trace the origin of the wristband, so. So don't take the risk, it's too dangerous and not cool at all. Rejected by Sky, the little girl instantly pursed her lips in frustration, it's so boring. You are just like Uncle Long, you have no adventurous spirit. However, as soon as the words fell, the little girl was grabbed by her clothes and lifted up by a big hand, Xiao Yu, I heard everything you said. You should listen to this sister and don't take risks. Do something dangerous. The little girl looked sideways and immediately grinned to please. Uncle Long, why did you come here? Uncle Long said angrily. Dad has repeatedly told us not to go out casually. In the blink of an eye, you disappeared. Didn't I come out to look for you? The two quarreled a few more words, as if they had just remembered Sky's existence, they quickly introduced themselves. Hello, kid. My name is Jackie Chan, and she is my niece, her name is Cheng Xiaoyu. We live in my father's antique shop opposite. As for your wristband, if you don't mind it, you can ask dad to help you take a look. Quote, Xiaoyu interrupted and said, Yes, Dad is a very powerful magic master. After Sky told the other party his name, he lowered his head and began to think. To be honest, she still has a good impression of the two people in front of her, 
not only because she thinks the other person is a good person, but also because she intuitively has a connection with them and it will be good for her. At this moment, the live broadcast of the TV station got closer again, and finally a reporter who was not afraid of death went to shoot and report from close range. But the picture that appeared on the TV was of a man who looked young, using all kinds of incredible abilities to fight against hatred. Sky pointed at the TV, I think we can watch this live broadcast. After understanding the meaning of Sky's words, Jackie Chan had no objection, but Cheng Xiaoyu jumped up happily. Then Jackie Chan glanced at the battle on TV and shook his head. I have to tell my dad, so Xiaoyu, just stay quietly by Sky's side and don't run around. Cheng Xiaoyu waved his hand. I won't run around, I want to watch heroes defeat evil. For the next time, Sky and Cheng Xiaoyu watched the battle on TV in the tea house. As the rhythm of the battle fluctuated, they, like everyone else around them, cheered, lamented, or felt sad. Disappointment, or surprise. With an eccentric little girl like Cheng Xiaoyu chatting away beside her, Sky's mood became better and better. After all, he is still a child. Although he hides many things in his heart, he is also very forgetful. After Cheng Xiaoyu interrupted him, all the previous worries disappeared without a trace. However, this battle lasted for a long time. At night, with the defeat of the Straw Hats, everyone fell into disappointment again. But at this time, the stomachs of the two still-growing children were already growling with hunger, got up. Cheng Xiaoyu was reluctant to take a look at the lively environment here. She stood up from the stool and stood on the ground, saying to Sky, I'm hungry, Sky. Let's go back and finish the meal first and then continue watching TV here. Sky was overjoyed, but then she thought about her identity and hesitated, I. I'd better forget it, I can just eat something outside. Cheng Xiaoyu took Sky's hand without any scruples and walked towards the door. Okay, if I go back alone, Uncle Long will scold me for being rude. And, let me tell you. Uncle Long's cooking skills are really good. If he stops working in the museum one day, he might be able to make money by opening a restaurant. Quote. Chattering other words endlessly. Cheng Xiaoyu took the overwhelmed Sky all the way to Dad's antique shop opposite the tea house. Dad, Uncle Long, we are back. Cheng Xiaoyu opened the store door and shouted loudly, Uncle Long, have you cooked the rice? We are already hungry. Boom. Suddenly, a knife struck Cheng Xiaoyu on the head, causing her to cover her head in pain. It hurts. Dad, why did you hit me? Sky looked over and saw an old man with a thin body, white eyebrows and a pair of small round glasses, holding a knife and scolding Cheng Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu. Dad said, why don't you do it? Don't go out casually until you know what's going on outside. This place makes Dad feel dangerous. Cheng Xiaoyu said nonchalantly. Dad, before we find out what's going on outside, at least we have to take the first step, right? The father said angrily. There is magic everywhere outside, but few people understand magic. This situation is very dangerous. Sky was confused and had no idea what the two of them were talking about, but she understood one thing, that is, magic, a power she once only thought was a fantasy, does someone really understand? Thinking of this, she calmly touched the bracer on her wrist. According to Cheng Xiaoyu and the others, the thing that brought her strength was also a magic item. I can drive magic items, is it possible that I also have magic ability? Thinking of this inexplicably, Sky's eyes lit up. After all, I am still a child, and when I experience this kind of thing for the first time, I will always be whimsical. After scolding Cheng Xiaoyu, the father turned to look at Sky. Hello, kid. I heard Jackie Chan say, Is your name Sky? Sky responded nervously. Yes, my name is Sky. Hello, old man. The father smiled and waved his hand and said, Okay. Kid, relax, don't be so nervous, just like Xiaoyu and the others, just call me daddy. Yes, dad. Obviously, Sky was still very nervous. Dad didn't pay attention, but looked at the wrist guards on Sky's hands, let's eat first. After eating, we will take a look at what you have on your hands. I don't know which great god took a fancy to you and actually knew how to do it. I'm sending you such a special artifact. Cheng Xiaoyu heard the keyword, artifact. Dad. You said the magic item in Sky's hand is an artifact. Cool. Sky was also extremely surprised. Although she had called this thing an artifact before, that was just her first impression. However, 
After learning from Xiao Yu that it was a magic item, she no longer regarded it as an artifact. But I didn't expect that now from the mouth of the magic master, it has been overturned again, this thing is really an artifact. He raised his arm thoughtfully and looked at the black and gold wristband. At the dinner table, Sky finally understood Cheng Xiaoyu's praise of Jackie Chan's cooking skills. It was also the first time for Sky to eat such a warm and fragrant meal. Although Sky did not say a few words during the whole meal, with the lively Cheng Xiaoyu and the friendly atmosphere between her grandfather and grandson, Sky was able to for once I felt like home. While they were eating happily, Agent May and other agents from the Shinmei Bureau quietly set up surveillance around Dad's antique store. Sir. I found out that Dad's antique shop was opened a week ago. The owner is an antique connoisseur named Dad. Dad has a nephew named Jackie Chan who works at the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. In fact, archaeologist Jackie Chan has a niece named Cheng Xiaoyu, who is 11 years old and is currently in middle school at a nearby Chinese education center. All three of them recently came to the United States because of Jackie Chan's work, and there are no signs of any suspiciousness. After Agent May listened to her subordinate's report, she nodded, I understand, but you still have to pay attention. After all, the three of them are not direct relatives, but they live together, which is very suspicious. The subordinate explained, Sir, we have verified this. My father has never married, and his nephew, Jackie Chan, has always lived with him. Cheng Xiaoyu's parents were busy with work, so they gave her to Jackie Chan to take care of her. Agent May frowned. Although the information was perfect, she always felt that there was something wrong with it. I understand, but don't be careless. So many things have happened in the United States during this period. They came here at this time. Maybe there are some hidden secrets. After hearing this, the subordinate immediately replied seriously, Yes, I understand. After her subordinates left, Agent May came to the house diagonally across from Dad's antique shop. Facing the cold wind, she looked at the closed door of Dad's antique shop below and fell into deep thought. Kamar Taj, Sorcerer Supreme Ancient, while paying attention to the changes on the earth, he is also guarding against invasions from other dimensions. Now, he set his sights on two places, one was performing surgery in the hospital, and the other was Xiaoyu who was eating in his father's antique shop. Is this another otherworld invasion? This time seems a little different from the previous ones. The Ancient One looked at Xiaoyu's cheerful look and smiled unconsciously, what a perfect magical fit. If she can inherit the position of Sorcerer Supreme, then. Although Xiaoyu and others are from Otherworld, they did not make any big noise, and they were very cautious and low-key. As a being who has lived for thousands of years, the Ancient One has a very open-minded view on many things. As long as it is not the invasion of Mephista from the dimension, the Ancient One will basically not care about it. Just like Agent Chin has been in the world for several years, he has never caused trouble for him. There was also the alien invasion incident decades ago, but he just watched and didn't care. Only when the existence of Otherworld poses a threat to this world will he step in to stop it. As for the three people in his father's antique shop that he has seen so far, it goes without saying that Xiaoyu said, even the air he decided on first was not as compatible with Xiaoyu's magic. In the eyes of Ancient One, the magical energy around Xiaoyu seems to be born for her. Her presence can make magic active and cheerful. As long as Xiaoyu masters the method of magic, she can become a magician in the fastest time. Grand Master As for the magic master dad mentioned by Xiaoyu, Ancient One can also see his profound magic cultivation, especially unlike the magic power obtained from the transaction with Mephista from another world like them, the magic possessed by dad himself the power is his own. However, although this power does not need to be returned, it is still far behind the power of Mephista. However, magic is originally a kind of knowledge. The more knowledge you get, the stronger the magic becomes. So Ancient One is still looking forward to the day when he can communicate with his father. Before that, he had to solve some other things and observe these people for a while. After eating, Xiaoyu wanted to drag Sky to the tea house opposite to enjoy the fun, but Jackie Chan stopped them. Xiaoyu, there is a TV at home, so you can't go out casually at night. Xiaoyu was helpless. Okay, Uncle Long, I understand. With that said, he turned on the TV with Sky and saw the live battle between Abomination and Hulk. The two behemoths struggled together, 
and although the damage caused was greater, it was finally limited by Hulk within a certain range. Xiao Yu was so excited that she jumped up from the sofa and shook her fist in the air. Hey, big man, you should hit him like this. You're so stupid. Why can you only attack straight away? Oh, God, your attacks like this are ineffective. Look, the hatred on the other side has already taken care of you. It's so. Sky looked at Xiao Yu in disbelief. She didn't expect that a child as young as Xiao Yu would have such a rich understanding of fighting. Xiao Yu, do you know Kung Fu? Hearing Sky's question, Xiao Yu nodded definitely, definitely. I learned the ancient hip movement art from Uncle Long. Uncle Long also said that I should exercise my self-control, but how could he understand how keen a child who has learned Kung Fu is to fight? Sky was a little envious of the atmosphere around Xiao Yu, unlike her, who always lived so timidly. At this time, Jackie Chan appeared behind the sofa. Xiao Yu, I heard it again. Uncle Long, why do you show up so promptly every time? Uncle Long was very helpless towards Xiao Yu, but this was his lovely niece, what could he do with her? He could only pamper her. Jackie Chan said to Sky. Sky, Dad asked me to take you there. Upon hearing this, Xiao Yu ignored the battle on TV. From her fighting experience, Hulk, this idiot, was destined to fail. Moreover, she was even more curious about the artifact in Sky's hand. Sky nodded solemnly, and then followed Jackie Chan to the basement. Xiao Yu naturally followed with interest, she would not miss this excitement. When they arrived underground, Sky happened to see that her father had changed into a magician robe and was standing seriously in front of a magic circle, holding a dried pufferfish and dried lizard in both hands. After Sky arrived, her father nodded to her and said, Sky, put your wrist guards on the magic circle now. We need to find out who sent this to you. Sky did not hesitate. After all, she also had this question in her mind. If she didn't figure it out, she was also afraid of what kind of results she would get in the end. The moment he reached out to take off the wrist guard, Sky suddenly felt that the power in his body was starting to lose control. Waves of vibrating energy surged into his hands, causing them to vibrate uncontrollably. At the same time, an overwhelming sense of pain also passed from his hands to his brain. Dad, in panic, Sky can only turn to her father, who is most likely to help her. Jackie Chan and Xiao Yu were also shocked by this sudden change and wanted to go to bed. Come and help. Sky, put on the wrist guards. Jackie Chan suggested. But his father overruled him. No need. It seems that Sky has this power yourself, but it is just activated by this artifact. You need to control it with your own will. Don't rely on external things. During the meal, Sky told them her past experiences and abilities because she trusted her dad, so her dad immediately gave the best advice. Sky was still hesitation. But, dad, if this energy breaks out, then here. Dad smiled confidently. Don't worry, I am a master of magic. As he spoke, he began to mutter something. The monsters and ghosts leave quickly, the monsters and ghosts leave quickly, the monsters and ghosts leave quickly, the monsters and ghosts leave quickly. Along with the strange spell, the strange magic weapon in the father's hand emitted a green light, and then shot towards Sky's hands, completely covering them. Instantly, the vibrations in the surrounding area stopped due to the vibration of Sky's hands, but Sky's hands continued to vibrate. Dad, how did you do it? Xiao Yu asked in surprise. Dad smiled confidently. To make reasonable use of knowledge, vibration needs to be transmitted by objects. Dad locked the vibration in a vacuum environment and naturally it will not affect other things. Then, he became serious. Sky, don't worry now, rely on your perseverance to control this power that originally belongs to you. Sky nodded firmly, then stared at her hands tightly. Ah! The loud shouting made Sky focus more and more. Finally, she caught that little bit of spiritual light, and then slowly controlled the restless vibrating energy in her body, and finally calmed it down. As soon as Sky returned to normal, she instantly collapsed to the ground sweating profusely. Jackie helped her up, stood aside, and watched her father place the black and gold wristbands on the magic circle. Okay, now let's see who you belong to. Outside Dad's antique shop, Agent May and others also noticed abnormalities in the detection device. Sir, there is a shock reaction from Dad's antique store. Agent May frowned, continue to pay attention. 
Although she is very worried about Sky's safety, her previous experience has made Sky very resistant to them, so it is really difficult for them to show up when there is no real danger, otherwise it may further intensify the conflict between the two parties. Contradiction. Soon, in less than a minute, another message came from his subordinates, Sir, the shock reaction has disappeared. Agent May looked at the closed door of her father's antique shop. It was obviously very close, but they knew nothing about what was going on inside, which made her feel very uneasy. Kamar Taj, the ancient one who was meditating with his eyes closed, suddenly seemed to sense something and immediately cast his sights on Dad's antique shop. When he saw his father placing the wrist guard on the unknown magic circle and starting to cast a spell, he immediately understood what the other party had planned. In this regard, the Ancient One is unwilling to let this matter come true, because it is something sent to the real dimension by Mephista from the dimension. Although the character of this new Mephista is not clear, his existence is to protect the Earth from the invasion of Mephista from the dimension. With his eyes focused, he immediately stood up from the ground, then stretched out his hand, and a portal shining with countless sparks appeared in front of him, and on the other side of the portal was the door of his father's antique shop. Although there are shield agents watching around, the Ancient One has its own way for them to discover six. He walked through the portal and saw the door of his father's antique shop. He was very surprised. There is magic protection. Because he suddenly came to an unknown world and realized that this world was very dangerous, Dad set up a magic protection for his store, which was something he had never done before. However, this magical protection can only block the portal from the outside, but cannot prevent the intrusion of Sorcerer Supreme. Ancient One didn't have time to say hello, he just flashed, quietly entered the antique store, and then quickly rushed towards the basement. Unfortunately, by the time Ancient One rushed to the basement, it was already too late. In the basement, as the father's spell began to recite, the magic began to fluctuate violently. At the same time, under the influence of magic, the wrist guard shone with golden light, and then the wrist guard transformed and turned into a golden crystal body with no rules. What is this? Why did the wrist guard become like this? Sky was shocked. She did not expect that her wrist guard artifact would turn into such a thing. Jackie Chan and Xiao Yu also looked puzzled, not understanding what happened at all. Dad stared at the golden crystal body. This is the true appearance of an artifact. It can be transformed into an item that best suits you according to each person's different characteristics, so that you can perfectly control your power and increase your potential. It is indeed an artifact. Although it does not directly increase the original strength, but once this kind of artifact is known to other people with evil ideas, they will definitely snatch it away at all costs. Is this an artifact created by the god? Quote, Mephista, the dimension of the Void Realm, Lord of the Void. Ancient One heard his father's question as soon as he arrived in the basement, so he answered the other party's question seriously. Everyone was shocked, why did someone suddenly break in? They immediately took an attack stance, and Xiao Yu even shouted, Dad, your protective array didn't work. Dad pointed the magic weapon in his hand at the Ancient One and retorted, There is nothing wrong with Dad's protective array. It's just that this magician is too strong. He avoided Dad's arrangement. Ancient One stretched out his hand and said, I have no ill intentions. I am the Sorcerer Supreme Ancient One who protects the Earth from the invasion of evil dimensions. I have been paying attention to you for a long time. I came here to stop your actions, but it seems I'm still a step too late. Perhaps the sincerity moved everyone, or perhaps they felt that they could not defeat each other, so although they were still vigilant, everyone still put away their attacks. Dad asked, Ancient One Magician, what is the dimension Mephista? Ancient One walked forward and looked at the golden crystal body that shone brighter and brighter as he approached and said slowly, there are many dimensions in this world. Our earth is in the real dimension. Superimposed on the real dimension or other dimensions such as hell, darkness, light, time, space, magic and other dimensions. In some of these dimensions, there are dimension Mephistas who control the original dimension. Although they are not all evil, most of the Dimension Mephistas invade other dimensions in order to improve their own strength. And the Dimension of Reality, as the cornerstone of all dimensions, is the dimension they want to erode most. And this spar is an anchor point that the new Mephista, born from nothingness, was placed on the earth by the Lord of Nothingness. As soon as this information came out, the four people present felt that their minds were shutting down. 
The world was so huge and complicated. Dad frowned and asked, In that case, why didn't you stop that lord of nothingness from dropping an anchor to the earth? Ancient One sighed, Because it can't be done. Can't do it, aren't you the sorcerer supreme who protects the earth from the invasion of Dimension Mephista? Why can't you do it? Dad was very puzzled. He was able to prevent the Dimension Mephista original but could not prevent the ugly part of the Dimension Mephista. Ancient One's eyes were complicated. This is an unspoken rule. The real dimension is the cornerstone. Any life is allowed to appear in the real dimension. As long as it does not cause damage, no one can stop it unless they control the entire universe. Dad understood now. In other words, the real dimension is the parents, and the other dimensions are the children. Parents can tolerate all kinds of mischief by their children. As long as they don't make too big a mistake, there won't be too much discipline for money. Closing parenthesis. Quote. Ancient One nodded. Your wisdom is admirable. Sky suddenly asked. Then the Lord of Nothingness is good. The Ancient One shook his head. I don't know, he is a Mephista born from nothingness. Before this, there has never been a Mephista born from nothingness. Apart from his origin and name, we don't know anything about him. At this time, the golden crystal body suddenly lit up with bright golden light, covering the basement. What's going on? Careful, in the vigilant eyes of everyone, a lazy man slowly emerged from the golden crystal body. Kana Zawu looked at the five people in front of him, you seem to be very curious about me. In the basement of Dad's antique shop, Shen Zawui appeared, and everyone present immediately remembered his identity. Mephista of the Void Dimension, Lord of the Void. Ancient One held up his hands, and two magic circles appeared in his hands, Lord of Nothingness, you actually broke into the real dimension. Shen Zawu smiled. You are making so much noise that it's hard for me not to hear you. Aren't you very curious about me? So I will satisfy your request and come out to let you see my existence. The Lord of Nothingness, Shen Zawu, looks no different from ordinary humans, and his personality seems to be very kind, which makes others accept the Ancient One slightly lower their guard against him. Ancient One stared at Shen Zawu. Lord of Nothingness, don't tell these lies, tell me, what is your purpose in coming to Earth this time? Shen Zawu smiled. As a new Mephista, isn't it normal for me to be curious about this world? Why do you think I have any thoughts about this world? Ancient One frowned. Your approach of projecting artifacts to the Earth is completely different from your words. Others were also shocked by this. Indeed, no matter how outrageous Shen Zawu said, what he did was basically no different from other Mephistas. Sky was even more nervous and clasped her hands tightly. She still had some illusions about giving her an artifact and letting her awaken her own power to escape from the hellish orphanage. In addition, Kana didn't behave that badly and looked like a noble with a lazy temperament, which made the Sky Girl's mind fluctuate even more. Therefore, from the bottom of her heart, she did not hope that Shen Zawu would be the kind of person who would do anything at all. In response to Ancient One's question, Shen Zawu smiled softly. It is to take care of your persecution delusion that I used this method. I am curious about this world, can I only stay in my own dimension? Random guesses. In order to take care of people like you, my methods are already very gentle. As for things like artifacts, please forgive me, I can't create anything too ordinary. Although Shen Zawu's words were explaining his behavior, they were more of a mockery of Ancient One's persecution delusion. Sure enough. As soon as Shen Zawu said these words, Ancient One's face instantly turned ugly, while others, including his father, a magician who was always close to demons, also nodded in approval. Then, Shen Zawu suppressed his smile and looked at the Ancient One with sharp eyes. Did the famous Sorcerer Supreme regard the real dimension as your private residence? Or do we, Mephistas from the dimension, want to come here to have a look? Do I need to make an offering to you and get your permission before I can come? The Ancient One looked extremely ugly. He had been standing tall for thousands of years, and he was neither humble nor arrogant in the face of any existence. Even those Mephistas from the dimension who had been fighting against him for thousands of years had never humiliated him like this. But he had to admit that what Shen Zawu said made sense. As a new Mephista, Kami Zimu became curious about the world, and then went to explore the world. This kind of thing is understandable at all. Moreover, the artifact projected onto the earth by the other party served more as a pair of eyes for him. It has never been like this. 
It's like Mephisto in the Hell Dimension, leaving things everywhere that can confuse people and summon his true form to come. As for the ability to stimulate Sky's body, it can only be said that the power of Dimension Mephisto is too powerful. Even a trace of it leaked can have extremely powerful effects. Shen Zewu does not use artifacts to control people's hearts, nor does he use artifacts to destroy the stability of the dimension. He just wants a pair of eyes to let him see the world. A dimensional Mephisto like him without any evil thoughts cannot be found in the entire world. However, Ancient One felt strange inexplicably. Although he couldn't tell where it was, he just felt strange, and this strangeness came from Shen Zewu. However, when things have developed to this extent, it is impossible for Ancient One to really characterize the other party. If the other party really has no ill intentions, then isn't he creating a new enemy for himself? Since the Lord of Nothingness has no ill intentions towards the Earth, then. Before he finished speaking, Shen Zewu looked at the Ancient One even more coldly, these are my eyes in the real dimension. If you want to seal them, what's the difference between them and me in the realm of nothingness? Ancient One One, don't go too far. The Ancient One still insists, this is your family's statement, who knows if you are lying. Shen Zewu is just a projection now and doesn't have much power, but after he got really angry at this moment, everyone present felt invisible pressure falling from the sky. But the next moment, when Ancient One's expression changed and he was about to take action, Kana suddenly noticed a black mark flashing across Ancient One's eyebrows. Ancient One, you have absorbed so much dark power. It seems that you have been deeply affected. One word reveals the secret, and since God has no understanding of the Ancient One, it is impossible for the other party to be so persistent, and the vigilance against Dimension Mephistas is only aimed at Dimension Mephistas like Mephisto and Dormammu who have evil ideas about the real dimension. I have been very patient in expressing my kindness, but the other party is still aggressive, which is very different from Ancient One's own original character. This also made Kana Zawu feel very curious. You must know that no matter based on Ancient One's cultivation or his performance in his original destiny, although he absorbed the dark power, it only guaranteed the survival of his life, and never what impact did it have on him. But now, the Ancient One has been affected by the dark power in his way of thinking. Hearing Kami Zawu's words, Ancient One's face became even more ugly. He quickly closed his eyes and sank into his own spiritual sea. The originally clear spiritual sea I don't know when it was now contaminated with some black filth. Dormammu, Ancient One understood instantly. Due to several alien existences that traveled to this world, he felt that his own strength was still somewhat insufficient, so he absorbed more dark power than before. But he didn't expect that Dormammu would take advantage of at the moment and plot against him, causing him to be affected by the dark power. Hunting geese all day long, and finally being pecked by geese happened to me, which taught the Ancient One a huge amount of lessons. Immediately sealing the dark power in the Sea of Spirit, Ancient One felt that his mind was instantly clear, and then the pressure of these days also disappeared. When he opened his eyes again, the unobvious fierceness in his eyes had disappeared, and he once again transformed into the calm and calm Sorcerer Supreme who was sure of everything. Chapter 81 Noticing the changes in Ancient One, the anger in Shen Zewu's eyes quietly left, and he returned to his previous lazy look. It seems that our Sorcerer Supreme has solved another crisis that could endanger the world. It's gratifying. For this kind of cynicism, Ancient One at the moment had no emotion in his heart, and he was still a little grateful to God. Although the words were sarcastic, the Ancient One understood that if he never discovered Dormammu's plot, it would eventually develop into a crisis that would endanger the world. Ancient One made a magician salute to Shen Zewu, I hope the Lord of Nothingness will forgive me for my previous recklessness. The Earth has no discriminatory attitude towards anyone and welcomes any existence with good intentions. Shen Zewu sneered, aren't you going to take away my things? Ancient One adhered to the spirit of self-reliance and shook his head with a smile, although it was made by the Dimension Mephista, it did not leave anything that has a bad impact on the world. Such an artifact with positive effects, even I can't it's hard to be a little greedy. Kana took a deep look at Ancient One, it seems that you should have clearly seen the function of this crystal body. Ancient One nodded, your excellency is the lord of nothingness and controls the dimension of nothingness. Nothingness originally has no attributes, but it can be transformed into any other attributes. Therefore, nothingness belongs to the omnipotent power, 
and although this crystal body is only it was used as your eyes, but it was contaminated with the power of nothingness, and originally had omnipotent power. Then, he looked at Sky with the eyes of Lucky Man, and continued, This crystal body can be transformed into the most helpful artifact according to the characteristics of the person it recognizes, allowing the user to safely awakening your own power, enhancing power, controlling power, and shielding the negative effects of power. Hearing this, Dad, Jackie Chan and Cheng Xiaoyu all showed surprised expressions, especially Cheng Xiaoyu. She was even more curious, what would it look like if she held it in her hands? But the characters of these three people were obviously good enough, and they were not greedy at all, but just curious. Sky's face was full of surprises. At this moment, she finally understood why she was able to awaken the power, and she was able to perfectly control the power for the first time awakening, and even exerted such a powerful effect. And just now, because she lost the protection of the artifact and lost control of her power, the pain that came from her hands also made her understand that her power still had great flaws. But such an artifact that everyone can fit in appears directly next to him. It is obvious that the person chosen by the Lord of Nothingness is him. He wants to see the world on his own. This idea of being recognized, noticed, and cared for instantly took root in Sky's heart, making her feel filled with warmth, and the look in her eyes towards Kana also changed slightly. Shen Zawu didn't notice Sky's changes. He just felt an inexplicable feeling that made him feel numb for a moment, as if he was being watched by someone, which made him very uncomfortable. However, this feeling came and went quickly. If he hadn't been so powerful, he would almost have thought it was an illusion. But he didn't notice any danger, so he didn't delve into it. Things would eventually be revealed anyway. After listening to the Ancient One's story, Shen Zawu clapped his hands, as expected of the Sorcerer Supreme, he is indeed well informed. So now, what do you want to do with such an artifact? Ancient One took a deep look at the Golden Crystal Body. This artifact also has a great effect on him, but because of his previous experience, it is obvious that the other party cannot let him use it. Although it is said that the artifact is recognized, it is obvious that it can only be used with the approval of Kami Zawu. Since you have chosen this little girl, let her be your help in observing the world. Kana nodded, ignoring Sky's excited and blushing expression, but he made his request. As my choice, Daisy's current environment is very lacking in her growth. Ancient One took the opportunity and said, I can help. However, Kana shook his head and said, Magician, what you master is magic. Daisy has no magic talent, so you can't help her. Since she has mastered such a powerful power, as the person who selected her, I will naturally arrange it for her. The best teacher ever. When Ancient One heard this, his eyes immediately showed vigilance, I wonder what kind of teacher you want to arrange. Kanzaki waved his hand gently, and an angel with long silver hair, blue pupils, wearing extremely gorgeous armor, and white wings on his back immediately appeared next to him. Angel Hexi, the great angel of Merlot Heaven, has met the Lord of Nothingness. As soon as Angel Hizaifu appeared, he immediately bowed his head towards Shen Zawu. Angel, the appearance of Hishi instantly shocked everyone present. Not only was Hexi shocked by his beautiful appearance, but also the fact that a mythical creature like Angel really appeared, and he was also a subordinate of the Lord of Nothingness. In response to this, after being shocked, he immediately reacted, the teacher arranged by your excellency is this one. She should also be on the magic side in nature. Shen Zawu smiled disdainfully. Who said you have to have a magical side to have an angel? After that, he no longer explained, but gave Hishi a look and let him show it himself. Hishi stood up. At the moment, she was the same as Shen Zawu. Her body was in the realm of nothingness, and she was just a projection in front of everyone. Although his eyes' expression was very gentle, he gave people a sense of arrogance. Our Merlot Heavenly Palace was built by the Angel Civilization. After millions of years of evolution and development, the scientific and technological achievements of the Angel Civilization are by no means comparable to ours. You know, every citizen of the Angel Civilization has eternal life. Through continuous iteration of technology, the power we have is enough to dominate any interstellar civilization in the real field. Although he she was only preaching the greatness of angel civilization, she she still accurately grasped the important information. This Merlot heaven is not the angel in the impression, but a civilization that possesses powerful technology and can transform itself. 
Their technology is so powerful that everyone in the civilization is immortal, and they are even constantly iterating and developing technology. At the same time, this is the result of millions of years of development of their civilization. You're lying. Xiao Yu put her hands on her hips and pointed at Hexi and said, Obviously the Ancient One magician said before that the Lord of Nothingness is the newly born dimension Mephista. How could your angel civilization develop for millions of years? Quote. As she said this, she raised her head proudly, thinking that she had discovered the 10 o'clock market news. Jackie Chan and Sky on the side also reacted instantly, and their expressions looking at he she began to become strange. Especially for Sky, she was a little uncomfortable when such a beautiful angel appeared next to Kami Zawu, not to mention that the other party was such a powerful being, and it was more likely that Kami Zawu had arranged it for her, teacher. But at this moment, after being exposed by Xiao Yu's lie, Sky was still very happy in her heart. However, unlike the three of them, Ancient One and Dad did not show any special expressions. Obviously, they did not question what he she said. Hexi lowered his head to look at Xiao Yu and smiled. Little girl, you are very discerning, but it is a bit inappropriate for you to compare the human concept of time with the dimension Mephista. This sentence left Xiao Yu speechless. After all, she was just a child. Although she was a little smart, she was still far behind when facing a big boss like he she. Dad opened his mouth to come to the rescue. Don't underestimate the existence of dimension Mephista that controls a dimensional field. Although Dad is aware of this existence for the first time, as a controller of a dimension, he wants to change the passage of time in the field. Speed shouldn't be a rare thing. Ancient One nodded and admitted. Most dimensional Mephistas will not do this, because the dimension is originally the source of their power, so they will not tolerate the existence of other existences competing with them for power in their own dimension, unless originally within the dimensional field. There is other life. Then, the Ancient One looked at Kami Zawu. Now I believe that you do not have any ill intentions towards the real dimension. After all, you can create life in your own dimension and help them grow. I have never seen such kindness like you. Dimension Mephista. It can be said that the Ancient One is impressed by the fact that God has no ability to develop life in his own dimension. However, for Shen Zawu, this is just an accident. In fact, for now, the Merlot Heavenly Court does not exist, and the Angel Civilization does not exist. With its narrow soul domain, it cannot support the development of the angel civilization for millions of years. Even if the soul domain is time-tested, accelerate. Therefore, the angel Hexi in front of Shen Zimu was actually a temporary creation. He was already familiar with this kind of thing, and it was impossible for others to discover the clues. The memories in his eyes mind were also compiled casually by Shen Zawu. Dot dot dot. In fact, his original plan was to use the angel civilization of Merlot Heaven to show that his power is not small, so that Ancient One would not despise him because he is a new dimension Mephista, and he also wanted to use Ancient One's words to claim his own power. The news of the good forces is transmitted to Mephista in other dimensions. On the one hand, this makes oneself safer, and on the other hand, it also prevents oneself from being connected with the gods of the heavens. Although no one has connected the two at present, but be prepared for a rainy day. Some details may not be important, but they cannot be left out. But to his surprise, the Dimension Mephistas turned out to be solitary beings. They themselves represented power. Originally, they themselves were a force that was difficult to match. Therefore, what Kami Zawu did can almost be regarded as an alien in the Dimension Mephista, which is the product of his human thinking. But it is not without effect. At least the Ancient One magician, who is also a human, has received the kindness of Shen Zawu. If this matter falls into the ears of other Mephistas, they will only think that Shen Zawu is a brain-dead fool. After all, he is not a if you acquire the dimension Mephista, you can have smooth sailing. There are many unlucky people who have had their identity as a dimension Mephista taken away. Just like the Hell Dimension, it has been divided into countless pieces. If an individual obtains the fragments of the Hell Dimension, he can become a Hell Dimension Mephista. Therefore, the Dimension Mephista that was born later will not allow anyone to infect its own dimension, because this behavior is too dangerous. After figuring out the cause and effect, Shen Zawu was speechless for a moment. He unintentionally became the laughing stock in the Dimension Mephista.
Oh, oh, oh. But as long as the Lord of Nothingness and the God of the Heavens can be separated, then it doesn't matter. After thinking about it, Shen Zewu threw all these thoughts out of his mind. After learning about the power of the Dimension Mephista from their father and the Ancient One, Jackie Chan and the other three's views on Hexi immediately changed. Although judging from the time on Earth, the other person may not have been born very long, but judging from the other person's experience, this is a great god who has lived for at least a few hails. With this kind of technological god who is full of knowledge as his teacher, Jackie Chan instantly came up with an idea that even he himself found a bit abrupt. As for Sky, her mood, which had already improved, suddenly fell down again, because the teacher in front of her seemed to be really talented. Although she was grateful to God for what she had arranged for her, she was so beautiful that it was hard to get excited about it. Angel, who is jealous of her feelings, really can't be happy. Shen Zewu naturally didn't know the complicated thoughts in the little girl Sky's heart. He just looked at Ancient One. Sorcerer Supreme, is the teacher I arranged suitable? Ancient One nodded in approval. I believe that the science of angel civilization must be very advanced, even if it is on earth, it cannot compare with it. But do you really want to hand over that knowledge to her? You should know how much impact this will have on the earth. Obviously, although he recognized the self-inflicted god, he still did not want the god to influence the earth. Shen Zewu waved his hand and said, I will let he she teach Daisy knowledge selectively, and I won't let you worry about it. Ancient One Thank you for your consideration. After solving the problem of Ancient One, Shen Zewu looked at Sky, you are my chosen one, don't let me down. Because we can't come to the earth at will, so you can use this artifact to when sleeping, the consciousness comes to the realm of nothingness and learns with Hexi. Sky pursed her lips, then nodded in agreement. Then, Shen Zewu looked at Cheng Xiaoyu. Although this little girl's ability is also very good, I don't think Sorcerer Supreme will allow her to follow his eyes education, right? Ancient One shook his head firmly. Of course, she has unparalleled magical affinity and is a born Sorcerer Supreme. 11. Nodding, Shen Zewu said goodbye. In that case, let's say goodbye. In an instant, the projections of Shen Zewu and he she disappeared, leaving only the golden crystal body still on the magic circle arranged by Dad. Seeing Sky reaching out to touch the crystal body, and the crystal body instantly turned into a familiar wrist guard, Xiaoyu looked envious, it's not like I don't have fun. Sky walked up to Ancient One, I just heard the Lord of Nothingness call me Daisy. Is that my real name? Ancient One looked at Sky calmly, child, you need to confirm this yourself. Ancient One finally exchanged magic with his father, opened the portal and left. Seeing the other person's back leaving gracefully, Xiaoyu's eyes shone with light, Dad. Is the Ancient One magician going to accept me as his disciple? After all, he said I was born a Sorcerer Supreme. However, Dad hit Xiaoyu on the head with a knife, Xiaoyu, you are still young. When you grow up and want to learn magic, Dad can teach you. However, Xiaoyu was dissatisfied and said, but it seems that the Ancient One magician's magic is more powerful. The father taught him earnestly, Xiao Yu, you have to understand that the essence of magic is to pay in order to get something in return. The spells mastered by the Ancient One magician were only mastered after they signed a contract with the Dimension Mephista. Their magic is not all what I have cultivated mostly comes from a trinity god called Weishan Emperor. The borrowed magic will eventually be returned to Weishan Emperor before death, and the soul will also stay with Weishan Emperor. This is the magic of the Sorcerer Supreme Lineage. You get so much and you give everything. Qi magic is different. Although it requires hard practice, as Ancient One Magician said, you have an unparalleled affinity with magic and will soon be able to master powerful magic. Moreover, the magic belongs to you, and you don't have to worry about it. Give it your all. Xiaoyu then gave up her obsession with Sorcerer Supreme. She was not willing to pay the price for her soul and return it to Emperor Weishan. Okay, then I don't want to learn it, but dad, just teach me some magic, a few. No, just one will do, how about it? Xiaoyu hugged her father's legs and begged him coquettishly, which gave her father a headache. Jackie Chan, come and take Xiaoyu away. It's already very late, the child should go to bed. He has to go to school tomorrow. Jackie Chan picked up Xiaoyu and then taught him earnestly, Xiaoyu, a child's responsibility is to study. When the time comes to learn magic, dad will teach you. 
Don't be too anxious. Okay, go now. Go to sleep, and remember to bring your homework with you tomorrow. I don't want to send you homework to school again. As the grandfather and grandson returned to the room, Sky looked down at the wristband on his wrist, gently rubbing it, and a smile gradually appeared on the corner of his mouth. Then she also left the basement and jumped back to the room that Jackie Chan arranged for her. Because they knew Sky's identity as an orphan, their kind father and Jackie Chan gave Sky a room to live in. Moreover, Jackie Chan also plans to contact Sky's orphanage in Chinatown, which is funded by major shops in Chinatown. Residents on the same street also say that, the orphanage is absolutely safe and stable. The purpose of arranging Sky to the Chinatown orphanage was to give Sky the opportunity to go to school. As a Chinese, Jackie Chan knew that if he wanted to change his destiny, he could only find a way out by studying more, especially for orphans like Sky. A person who knows nothing will simply not be able to grasp the opportunities that fate has left for him. Sky did not refuse Jackie Chan's kindness at the moment. Although she still didn't like places like orphanages, she could still tell who was nice to her. Moreover, now that she has the artifact in her hand, the Lord of Nothingness has also arranged for her to have a teacher, and she has to go to class every night when she sleeps, so another safe place for her to make a smooth transition is definitely a good place. Definitely, Sky was not summoned by Hishi to study on the first night. It was obviously not in time. The next day, Xiao Yu, who was yawning repeatedly, was pulled out of bed by Jackie Chan, which was in sharp contrast to Sky, who was in high spirits. At the dinner table, Jackie Chan said to Sky, Sky, after I send Xiao Yu to school, I will go and ask the orphanage for advice. Today you will help some dads in the store, okay? Sky nodded quickly. No problem, Uncle Long, just go and do your work. Jackie Chan was very satisfied with Sky's obedience, and when he saw Xiao Yu lying on the table with her eyes closed and food in her mouth, he felt a headache. After Jackie Chan and Xiao Yu left, Si diligently helped his father clean and organize the antique shop. When the two of them were busy talking to each other, Agent May opened the store door and walked in. The antique shop is still being reorganized. Dad won't be opening the store these days. Dad said without looking back. He thought they were ordinary customers. Sky also ignored it and just immersed himself in doing his own thing. Agent May looked at the busy young and old people in the store. I am Shield Agent Melinda May, and I have something to talk to Sky about. As soon as these words came out, Dad and Sky immediately turned their heads to look. When Sky saw Agent May, he immediately made a warning gesture It's you. You actually chased me here. Dad looked at May Agent in confusion, Shield. What organization is that? And, Miss Agent, do you have anything to do with Sky? Unlike Sky's excitement, Dad was used to wind and rain, so he was very calm and wanted to understand the reason. Sky said excitedly, Dad, this woman is not a good person. After I left that orphanage, they clearly knew what the orphanage did, but they still wanted to arrest me. Hearing this, Dad's eyes became sharp. Is that so, Miss Agent? Sky had told them everything about the orphanage. Although they couldn't control the tragedy in the orphanage, Sky had escaped, and it was right in front of him. Naturally, it was impossible for his father to let him go. Sky is in danger again. Not to mention that Sky has a special status now and has been recognized by the Lord of Nothingness. He is also recognized by the Lord of Nothingness as the existence of eyes. Sky can't have any accidents. Agent May immediately explained. It's not what Sky said. Our shield has nothing to do with that orphanage. Our shield is a special force of the International Security Council specially used to deal with various strange incidents. Maybe the old gentleman is not I don't know, but Sky was detected by us when she was using her special ability. I'm not here to capture Sky, but I want to take her to a safe place and help her. However, these words were not recognized by Sky. Come on. Help me. You obviously want to imprison me, and then you came here for my ability, and you want to use me as a guinea pig for research. Agent May saw Sky getting more and more excited as she spoke, and she immediately stretched out her hand to show that she was not carrying a weapon. Hey. Sky, calm down, calm down. Our shield is not an evil organization, really. Dad is well informed, and he also sees that the agent in front of him does not seem to be an evil existence, but he still has to be suspicious and vigilant. But we have never heard of S.H.I.E.L.D., 
let alone such an organization under the International Security Council. The implication is that more evidence is needed to prove that SHIELD really exists, and Agent May is indeed a SHIELD agent. In this regard, Agent May was also very helpless. In the past, as long as she revealed her identity, almost no one would suspect it, but today she unexpectedly encountered such a strange person. Just when she was about to say something, a man in a suit walked in from outside, sir, around phone. Agent May had no choice but to take the phone and prepare to talk to Director Fury. However, at this time, a vibrating energy wave was shot towards them, knocking Agent May and the man in the suit away who were caught off guard, then hit the wall and bounced back to the ground. Wu, after being attacked suddenly, both of them felt pain in their stomachs. Dad was also shocked by Sky's sudden attack. After reacting, he immediately stopped Sky's next attack. Sky, don't hurt anyone casually. Sky's eyes were filled with anger. Dad, they are in the same group. I once saw that man in the orphanage. I also heard him say something like, Hydra Hale. They are nothing at all. Shield agent, but Hydra. It's a Nazi. Although dad doesn't know what organization Hydra is, he still understands the Nazis. No wonder such an evil organization would do such cruel and evil things. You deceived dad. You are also doing something that will send you to hell. The indignant dad immediately took an attack stance and attacked the two agents who had just gotten up from the ground. Although the two were attacked, their ears were still fine. Agent May was shocked. She couldn't believe what she heard. Hydra, an evil organization that had been eliminated, still existed in the world. The man in the suit was shocked, feeling that the situation had become dangerous. Therefore, the man in the suit immediately got up from the ground took out a pistol from his arms, and was ready to kill everyone in the store. J. The father roared angrily and kicked the man in the suit on the wrist. The man in the suit immediately dropped his pistol to the ground due to the pain. Then the father turned around and kicked him, and the man in the suit was hit against the wall again. Agent May, who was on the side, jumped up when her father was beating the man in the suit, and picked up the pistol that the man in the suit had dropped on the ground. But the next moment, the shock energy wave knocked it away again, and the pistol fell to the ground again. Sky ran forward, picked up the pistol, and then fired another shock energy wave to knock down May Agent. In the blink of an eye, the grandfather and grandson knocked down two experienced agents. Sky looked angrily at Agent May, who was lying on the ground with a face of pain, you liar. You executioner. As she spoke, she seemed to have seen the tragic ending suffered by the orphans in the orphanage in 5.1, and thought about the possibility of the same ending for herself. This made her inner anger rise more and more. She condensed vibrating energy waves with her hands, trying to shake the people in front of her. May agent is killed directly. Sky, stop, you can't kill. Dad hurriedly stopped him. If Sky was allowed to kill May agent, there would be no way back for Sky. Sky was also awakened from his anger by his father, and gradually dispersed the energy area condensed in his hands. The man in the suit had been knocked unconscious by his father, so he began to interrogate Agent May, why do Nazis like Hydra still exist? What other secrets are you hiding? Agent May endured the pain, and she defended, I am not Hydra, I am really S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and I never knew he was Hydra. It is impossible to be convinced by this statement, because there is no evidence to prove that Agent May is not Hydra. After all, he and the man in the suit who are Hydra are companions. At this moment, the phone that fell on the ground suddenly rang, I can prove that Agent May is not Hydra. Although the sound coming from the handset of the mobile phone is not loud, it is extremely clear at this time. Sky looked at her father, she didn't know how to respond to this kind of thing. Dad picked up the phone, who are you? Dad is not that easy to lie. Director Fury's face turned dark. The old man's title opposite was too advantageous. I am S.H.I.E.L.D. Director Nick Fury. Agent May is an excellent S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. She is definitely not from Hydra. However, these words cannot convince Dad. Don't be stupid, Dad can't believe your words. Sky saw with his own eyes that the man is Hydra, and he is still your subordinate. Director Furui was helpless. When he encountered such a cautious person, he really had no good solution, I can find someone you trust to pick up Agent May. Please look after them both. Dad was very unhappy. You mean Dad still wants to feed these two guys? Don't be stupid, Dad is not like feeding a Nazi. 
So, if you were really that as for shield director, just go to the police station to find someone. After saying that, Dad hung up the phone unceremoniously, and then dialed the police number on his mobile phone. After doing all this, Dad glared at Agent May, just wait and don't force us to do anything. Agent May nodded with pain on her face. Sky's angry attack was too powerful. Although it was not fatal, the bone-chilling pain was still unbearable for a veteran agent like her. After tying up the man in the suit and Agent May, Sky glared at the two angrily, and then asked his father in confusion, Dad, there is no use in notifying the police, right? Dad nodded, and then took out a piece of paper. Dad understands, so Dad will use his own method to determine whether what they said before is true. Sky looked at the note, that seems to be left by the Ancient One Magician. Dad dialed the note and said, Yes, as a local snake, Ancient One Magician must know their identity and character. Therefore, we must first hold them back and prevent them from jumping over the wall in a hurry. After confirming their identities, we can then consider how to deal with them. Their attitude, only by knowing yourself and your enemy can you be victorious in every battle. Dad's handling method opened up Sky's eyes. It turns out that when encountering problems, you should not act rashly, but deal with them calmly and understand all the information, so that you can make the most correct choice. Soon, Tutu got information about S.H.I.E.L.D. from the Ancient One. It was determined that Director Fury was not a bad person, just a very suspicious agent, and Agent May was indeed a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, not a HYDRA agent. As for the man in the suit, he is indeed a HYDRA agent, and there are many such agents throughout S.H.I.E.L.D., and they are deeply hidden. This information should not have come out of the Ancient One's mouth, but the Ancient One knew the origins of his father and others, and was naturally afraid that they would cause some big trouble because they did not understand the situation. Especially for a department as powerful as S.H.I.E.L.D., if they really have a conflict with Dad and the others, the final result will definitely be bad. Therefore, instead of concealing it secretly, it is better to tell them this information openly so that they can feel more stable. After hanging up the phone, Sky looked at her father expectantly, Dad, how are you? What did the Ancient One magician say? Dad adjusted his glasses. Agent May didn't lie, but we don't want to contact S.H.I.E.L.D. Hydra has too deep contact with them. Be careful of getting angry. Sky nodded quickly. I understand, Dad. Dad smiled happily. You are much more obedient than Xiao Yu. I even want you to live here instead of going to the orphanage. Sky asked in surprise, Is it okay? Dad, can I really live here and not go to the orphanage? Seeing Skye's happy expression, his father thought of the relationship between the other party and the Lord of Nothingness, and felt that it was safest to keep her by his side, so he nodded and confirmed, Absolutely, I will tell Jackie Chan when he comes back, no need. You went to some orphanage, and you stayed here with me, just because of your identity. Well, maybe I can ask Jackie Chan to go through the adoption procedures. When Sky heard this, she immediately hugged her father happily, that's great. Dad, I like this place the most. Soon, the police came to the door. After asking for the transcript, they took Agent May and the man in the suit away without saying anything more or making things difficult for Dad and Sky. Obviously, they were ordered to simplify all procedures so as not to disturb Dad and their lives. And the one who can do this is obviously S.H.I.E.L.D. Director Nick Fury. The father who knew it well was not too surprised, but the young Sky was surprised by how talkative these police officers were. However, these details do not affect her happy mood. After all, she will live here, and from now on, this will be her home. Seeing Sky's little figure busy with cleaning tools like a dancing butterfly, Dad also smiled knowingly. There is a troublemaker Xiao Yu in the family, and there is an obedient Sky. I like the warm atmosphere at home more and more. In the evening, after returning home from work and school, the two people learned about their father's decision, and neither of them objected. Xiao Yu jumped up even more excitedly, finally having a little friend who could play with her. But Jackie Chan was a little helpless. I just negotiated with Director Lee of the orphanage. Forget it, let's transfer Sky's name to the Chinatown orphanage tomorrow, and then go through the adoption procedures. Different from the warmth of their 903 piece dad's antique store, in the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, in the director's office, Director Fury listened to Agent May's report on the action with a dark look on his face. So, Hydra was not actually eliminated, but invaded our S.H.I.E.L.D.
Although this was not the first time he heard such incredible information, Director Fury still couldn't believe it. Agent May didn't think so. Perhaps it wasn't just as simple as invading S.H.I.E.L.D. They might have done more things secretly that we don't know about. That orphanage involved not only our S.H.I.E.L.D., but also many congressmen and several people. A large pharmaceutical company. Director Fury said to Agent May with a solemn expression, Now none of us know how far Hydra has invaded S.H.I.E.L.D., so don't alert the enemy. I'll leave it to you to find out those spies, May. Agent, remember, don't trust anyone, not even your closest associates. Agent May's expression was serious, yes. Director. After Agent May left, Director Fury looked deeply at the closed door, then took out his mobile phone and made a call, as the captain awake. His battle has begun again. After what happened to Agent May, almost a month has passed. In this month, although the whole world is still in constant disputes, compared with the several tragic battles a month ago, in this month, people on the earth have lived a more peaceful life. It was extremely peaceful, as if I had returned to the days before Iron Man appeared. San Francisco, Dad's antique store, Xiaoyu and Sky went home together after school. After going through the adoption procedures, Jackie Chan sent Sky to the Chinese Education Center to go to school. Fortunately, although Sky could be seen as mixed race at a glance, her Chinese characteristics were still quite obvious, so it didn't take much trouble. And after having Sky, an obedient child, Jackie Chan no longer has to go to school to pick up Xiaoyu, the troublemaker, every day, and he can relax a lot. On the way home, Xiaoyu constantly talked to Sky about the childish things done by the children in her class, and constantly complained to Sky, saying that this kind of peaceful life was not cool at all, and it was not the excitement she imagined. Life. Sky had heard this a lot, so he acted as a qualified listener and did not express any opinions on such remarks. This calm look makes Xiaoyu always complain that Sky is still a child, but he always wants to imitate his father, an old man without any passion. However, what Xiaoyu doesn't know is that in addition to having classes at school during the day, Sky also has to be taught by Angel Hexy at night. The course arranged by the Lord of Nothingness for her has begun. Sky has made such a big change because through his eyes teaching, she understands a lot of knowledge that she didn't know before, and she understands the world better and better. More. Knowledge can completely change a person, which Sky is experiencing personally. Some things that were enough to make her lose control of her emotions in the past are now something she can deal with calmly. In this regard, as Sky, who has experienced two different teaching courses on Earth and Angel, the gap between the two is far more than a world of difference. Although it was impossible for Hexi to teach her much knowledge other than vibration due to Sorcerer Supreme, with just a few words from time to time, Hexi's accumulation of knowledge was enough to far surpass that of the school's teachers, and even more so. Scientists on Earth. Although Sky doesn't know how to use it yet, once Sky realizes it one day, this knowledge will make her the top scientist on the Earth. While Xiaoyu was chattering, when the two of them were almost at the door of their home, Xiaoyu suddenly stopped and showed a tangled expression. Sky looked at her doubtfully. Xiaoyu, what's wrong? Xiaoyu said hesitantly. Sky, I have a secret, I don't know whether I should tell it or not. Sky was greatly surprised. She didn't expect that Xiaoyu, a lively child, would have a secret. Okay, it seems you want to ask for my opinion, right? Xiaoyu nodded. We are already family, aren't we? Therefore, I think there are some things that cannot be hidden from you. As soon as these words came out, Sky became even more curious. Okay, maybe we can find a quiet place and let you tell me your little secret. In the cafe, the two found a quiet corner to sit down, and then each drank a glass of juice and looked at each other in silence. Seeing Xiaoyu still looking confused, Sky only found it interesting. After all, Xiaoyu had always been fearless. He never thought that she would have such a day. Okay, if you don't say anything, the juice will be finished and we should go home. Xiaoyu pursed her lips, and then said to Sky as if she had made a great decision, you must be calm about this matter. Sky's heart moved, and she seemed to understand what Xiaoyu wanted to say, and smiled, okay, it seems it has something to do with me, so just tell me, I'm already prepared in my heart. Xiaoyu stared into Sky's eyes, and then said quickly, actually, Uncle Long, me, and Dad are not from this world, we come from another world. Then, Xiaoyu took a long breath, 
as if a huge amount of burden had been lifted off her, and her whole expression became much lighter. However, when Xiao Yu looked at Sky's expression, the other person was beyond her expectation. Because Sky looked like he had known about it for a long time, Xiao Yu only wondered if her father or Jackie Chan had told her the news a long time ago. Sky smiled and said, Xiao Yu, although I really didn't know at first, but later I discovered that there are many photos of you in the past in the store, some of which I am familiar with, and some of which I am not familiar with. So, I have already guessed are you from another world. I was sure of this information until I started studying with teacher he she. Xiao Yu looked at Sky in surprise, so you already know. Sky nodded. Yes, I already know, but what does it matter? The family I identify with is you as a person, not your identity. Although it is very likely that one day in the future you will leave and return to our own world, but our family's identity will never change, right? Xiao Yu was so moved that her eyes turned red. Sky. That's right, we will always be family. The two embraced each other warmly, but the next moment, Xiao Yu returned to her out of the box attitude, wait a minute. Sky, have you already started studying with that beautiful angel? Sky's eyes twitched when she heard the name Xiao Yu called Hexi. It was obvious that although she recognized the identity of the other teacher, she still had some problems with him. Yes, I started studying with He Shi half a month ago, so it is not wrong to say that I am like my father, because the more and more knowledge I have accumulated is enough to make me feel emotional there are fewer and fewer fluctuations. Xiao Yu looked at Sky with a pitiful look, that's too bad. You have become a handsome old woman at a young age. Sky smiled and patted Xiao Yu. Don't say such things, okay, let's go home. Uncle Long should have come back from get off work by now. At night, before going to bed, Xiao Yu climbed into Sky's bed. Sky, tomorrow I will take you to a place where even Uncle Long and Dad don't know yet. Sky was very confused, but didn't take it to heart. After all, it was just a child's discovery, so what could be special about it? However, when Sky followed Xiao Yu all the way down the stairs to an underground base the next day, she suddenly discovered that it seemed that Xiao Yu, a child, was originally extremely special, so her discovery obviously could not be based on common sense. Judgment. Xiao Yu stood in the center of the empty underground base, opened her arms and smiled at Sky. Dang dang. Look, this will be our base in the future. Welcome to District 13. District 13. Sky shouted the name in surprise, it sounds like some kind of government department. Xiao Yu snapped her fingers. Yes, in our world, District 13 is known as the safest department. Sky had a strange expression, the most secure department, known as. Xiao Yu gave Sky a knowing smile. The head of District 13, Chief Blake, said so, and he also thinks so. Even Uncle Long has no objections. Sky smiled and asked, What about you? Xiao Yu, what do you think? Xiao Yu spread her hands. Adults are sometimes very naive. I am very familiar with this place. Ha 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 ha. The atmosphere between the little sisters immediately became cheerful. After the laughter, Xiao Yu took Sky's hand and walked towards the depths of District 13. Come with me, I'll show you something good. While walking towards the depths of District 13, Xiao Yu briefly described to Sky what they saw along the way. This is Coppler's rocket backpack, which is very cool. By the way, Coppler is one of the researchers in District 13, and his inventions are always so cool. These are the means of transportation in District 13, including cars and helicopters 213. Here are the weapons prepared for the agents in District 13. Although they are of little use, they can give them some sense of security. After introducing the weapons and equipment of District 13, Xiao Yu and Sky came to the depths of District 13, which was tightly sealed by a heavy door. Xiao Yu walked to the password input area next to her with a proud look on her face and said, Chief Black always sets some very simple passwords. After saying that, after she entered, 007, the door was opened immediately, look, it's that simple. I don't know why Chief Black and the others thought it was safe here. Sky can understand this, it should be reverse thinking. After all, no one would think that the password of such an important place is so simple. Xiao Yu spread her hands. Okay, adults' thoughts are really complicated. Then, the two of them went inside again. Sky, look, this is the Druid Stone, an ancient but weakly magical stone. 
but an international criminal organization used this stone to cooperate with satellites and the largest radio telescope to build he created a weapon system called the Doomsday Device, which was later destroyed by me, CGCH Uncle Long and Agent Tag. This is a ghost mask. It can summon the Black Shadow Core. Dad said this thing is very evil. Although I don't think so, Uncle Long and the others always tell me to stay away from them. As he went deeper and deeper, Sky's eyes gradually became serious. There is no doubt that many of the magic items collected in District 13 are not powerful, but they are very dangerous, because most of these magic items can be used by ordinary people without possessing magic power. Moreover, these are not the most important things, because Xiaoyu has taken her to the deepest part of District 13. Sky, next is the most important thing in District 13. Xiaoyu opened the last thick security door with excitement on her face, I don't know if he also came to this world. Him, Sky's heart moved. As the security door opens, there is a hall that can lead to several confined spaces. This is where the talismans are stored, this is where the statue of the Holy Lord is placed, and this is where the eight demons' energy is stored. Xiaoyu reached out and pointed at the confined spaces one by one, and introduced to Sky the items stored inside. Then, Xiaoyu took Sky into it one by one. Then, Sky saw the twelve talismans representing the twelve zodiac signs, the statue of the Holy Lord fixed quietly on the wall and unable to move, and the demons rolling in ten large glass jars. Lotus. Several other things did not shock Sky too much. Only the statue of the Holy Lord was motionless and showed no response as if it were a dead thing. But when he saw the Holy Lord for the first time, Sky was stunned. Kai felt a great crisis. After visiting the entire 13th district, Xiaoyu's excitement has not passed, but she is a little confused. Strange, the Holy Master gets angry every time he sees someone, why didn't he speak this time? Sky was extremely surprised. That statue can still talk. Xiaoyu nodded as he should and said, Absolutely, the Holy Lord is one of the eight demons that once ruled the earth. In order to resurrect and rule the world again, I don't know how much trouble it caused us. After hearing this, and thinking of the sense of crisis he had just felt from the statue of the Holy Lord, Sky immediately said to Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu, this place must be reported to Dad and the others immediately. The defense facilities here are too crude and very dangerous. Xiaoyu pouted when he heard this. If you tell Dad and Uncle Long here, then we won't be able to play here anymore. Sky looked at Xiaoyu. Everything here is not simple. Not to mention that there are several self-aware beings here, but if the magic props here are taken away by others, it will cause a lot of trouble. When Xiaoyu saw that Sky had said this, she had no choice but to agree, okay. Okay, then tell Uncle Long and the others. But I think that even if they know, they can't do anything good. Quote. During dinner time, at the dinner table, Jackie Chan stood up in shock, what? District 13 has also come to this world with us. Dad stopped Jackie Chan's fuss with a knife. Don't make too much noise, be careful that the walls have ears. Then, Dad asked Xiaoyu what else was in District 13, and Xiaoyu reluctantly told him. Sky also added her suspicions about the silent Holy Lord, feeling that the Holy Lord must also have discovered that the world has changed, so he is plotting some new conspiracy. Dad praised Sky with praise. Sky's idea is very good. It is not the character of the Holy Lord to remain silent all the time. A biting dog does not bark. This just shows what conspiracy the Holy Lord is doing. Jackie Chan also understood the importance of the matter and asked anxiously, So, Dad, what should we do? Whether or not there is Sheriff Black in this world, there are only a few of us, and it is impossible to guard District 13 all the time. In response to this, the father looked at Jackie Chan speechlessly. Okay, Chief Black has nothing to do with this kind of thing. Professional matters must be left to professional people to solve. The Holy Lord is too harmful. If it gets too big, a magician will definitely not be able to sit idly by. With that said, he stopped eating, picked up his cell phone and dialed Ancient One Magician's number. Soon, after telling Ancient One about the 13th district, Ancient One rushed over in a hurry. Obviously, Dad told the Ancient One about the horror of the Holy Lord. After all, it is one of the eight demons that once ruled the world, and it also has a place where various magic items are collected. The importance of this kind of place cannot be ignored by Ancient One. After seeing District 13, 
especially after seeing the twelve talismans, the statue of the Holy Lord, and the evil energy of the eight demons, the Ancient One's expression became even more solemn. A few people sat in District 13 and started discussing. Ancient One looked serious. Although at present, these magic props do not have much magic power, they are very functional. If they are obtained by illegal people, it will cause a lot of chaos. Dad also nodded in agreement. But the defense of District 13 is too easy to be breached, and the Holy Lord doesn't know what the situation is yet, but I can feel that the evil magic is about to move. The Ancient One asked his father in surprise, is this your chi magic means of looking for chi? Dad nodded. Yes, magic power is divided into yin and yang. When one side is prosperous, the other side will be weak. Now the evil magic power has begun to be restless. It is obvious that the Holy Lord has begun to act. After hearing this, everyone's expressions became solemn. It was not that the Holy Lord took action that made them feel solemn, but that the Holy Lord took action, but they were unaware of the difficulty of the matter. Therefore, without saying anything more, Ancient One said directly, Since the situation is urgent, Master Fang Dad, we will work together to first use magic to defend District 13, and then I will find other people to reinforce the entire area. Technological Defense of District 13 Xiao Yu asked curiously, Ancient One Magician, who are you looking for to reinforce District 13? Before the Ancient One Magician could answer, Sky had already thought of the answer, the Ancient One Magician is talking about Iron Man Tony Stark. The Ancient One Magician nodded without concealment. Yes, as far as the Earth is concerned, I think he is the most suitable person at present, and he is also a very responsible and righteous person. I think we should let you get to know each other. Quote, in this regard, the father did not refuse. Although that child looks unattractive, you can see that he is not a bad person. And being able to meet a rich man will also save us a lot of trouble. It will help Xiao Yu and Sky's studies. It's also very big. I have no objection to Ancient One Magician, and there is no need to call him over later to help him better improve the area. Ten minutes later, Tony looked at the huge amounts of underground base in front of him in bewilderment. He never imagined that he just came to help the Ancient One magician to do something, but he encountered such a magical thing. Xiao Yu looked at the steel battle suit on Tony's body with envy, and whispered to Sky, This steel battle suit is really cool. If I have one, then I can go on exciting adventures. Quote. Sky helplessly reached out and rubbed Xiao Yu's head. I think Uncle Long will definitely let you finish your homework before you take the risk. Xiao Yu's face immediately turned bitter, Oh no. Sky, you can't be such a spoiler. As the person who introduced the Ancient One magician, Dad gave Tony a brief introduction to the importance of Area 13 and the important magic props collected there. Tony slowly came back to his senses after a while. He looked at the Ancient One in disbelief. Sorcerer Supreme, although I have mentioned to you that I want to learn about magic, isn't this kind of place too abnormal? Ancient One nodded. Yes, District 13 came to our world from another world. Tony suddenly felt very speechless. He had finally been calm for a month. Why was fate so unwilling for him to rest? But what made him a little relieved was that this time this kind of thing finally didn't happen to him, but what followed was that he couldn't stand the defense here, it was too crude. He looked around. Old. Master Fang, is your world's defense for a place like this so simple? Dad nodded with deep understanding. That's why District 13 will always be breached, and even children like this can come and go freely. Seeing his father pointing at Xiao Yu, who was less than one meter tall, Tony felt that the workload of his next project must be very large, okay, I will start preparing to renovate this place. After receiving Tony's exact answer, the Ancient One and his father began to work together to use magic to lay down powerful magic defenses to wrap up the entire 13th district. Watching the two magic masters take action, although others could not understand, they could intuitively see the effect. Especially the defense laid down by Ancient One Magician, with layers of magic scattered around, distorting and blurring everything around. In the end, everyone standing in District 13 could intuitively feel that District 13 had entered another space and no longer existed in reality. As for Dad, in addition to drawing various symbols on the ground, he also held his own strange magic weapon and chanted the eternal mantra, Go away quickly. Go away quickly. Go away quickly. Go away. Subsequently, 
Green magic energy was emitted from the magic weapon to activate the symbols, and the entire 13th area was immediately wrapped in green magic energy. If he hadn't seen the success of magic with his own eyes, Tony might have been very suspicious of his father's actions, I have a question. Although Master Fang's spell is very interesting, does it look like the content of the spell? Although the question was directed to Jackie Chan, after all, among the people present, Jackie Chan seemed the most amiable and talkative. However, Jackie Chan doesn't understand this problem, he doesn't know magic. However, Dad heard this question with sharp ears, and he said directly, spells are just for people to perform magic better. Dad, I no longer need special spells to perform magic, so any spell will do. Ancient One Magician smiled and said, in fact, Master Fang doesn't need to use spells. However, Dad said, it would be too boring not to say spells. After the magic defense was arranged, everyone had to leave and go home. Before leaving, Tony asked his father for a favor. Master Fang, I want to borrow a horse charm. Asterisk. Dad looked at the reactor on Tony's chest. If you want to heal your injury, you need to take this thing off, otherwise the horse charm will make you become one with it. However, Tony shook his head and said, it's not to cure me, but to treat a very important person to me. He has been in a coma for two months because of me. Dad took a deep look at Tony, and then said to Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan, please get the horse charm. After getting the horse talisman, my father warned, remember not to expose the ability of the talisman, otherwise it will arouse the greed of many people. Tony solemnly put the horse charm away, I understand. With that said, just as he was about to leave, Dad said again, one more thing. Remember to send it back immediately after use. I'm afraid that the Holy Master will take advantage of this to carry out some conspiracy. Tony. I know, I'll send it back early tomorrow morning. One more thing. You must implement the defense of District 13 as soon as possible. I have put this matter on the record, and we will start renovations here in a week at most, no, three days. And one more thing. Tony forced a smile. Master Fang, if you have anything else, you might as well finish it all at once. Dad said angrily, impatient guy, do you know how to use the charm? Ah, in the early morning, Tony, who flew all the way to the hospital, excitedly put the charm in Ethan's hand, Ethan, wake up, you have slept for too long. As the magical energy surged through Ethan's body, the next moment, Ethan slowly opened his eyes. The first time he saw Tony, he immediately smiled and said, don't tell me you gave me artificial respiration. Tony smiled and scolded. You are not a beauty. Thank you, Ethan. Ethan raised his hand and looked down at the horse charm in his hand. So, you used this thing to save me. Tony smiled and said. You should have a good rest. I borrowed this thing from someone, and I have to return it to them tomorrow. Maybe you have had enough sleep. Ethan put the horse talisman on the bedside table and said with a smile. Yes, so, can you find me some recent newspapers so that I don't find that I can't keep up with the times? Tony picked up the horse charm, turned around and went out easily. Just wait, I'll have someone bring it to you, I'm going back to rest first. Looking at the closed door, the smile on Ethan's face slowly disappeared, and blood like red gradually emerged in his eyes. He raised his hand, and a flame appeared out of thin air, with an evil smile on his lips. This is a strange world. Dot and I don't seem to need the charm anymore. Jackie Chan, this time, let's see how you can stop me. Ha 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 ha. Half a month later, with the help of Tony, Banner and Agent Chin, District 13 was completely renewed and it was no longer the weakly defended base before. Looking at the final result, Tony clapped his hands. I think this can be used as a sub-base for us, specifically used to deal with magic issues. Banner studied the magic items curiously then you at least need to get dad's permission. Tony nodded seriously and said, I am also thinking about asking Master Fang and others to join us at the top. After all, the three of us don't have much problem with technology or combat, but we know nothing about magic. For the future plan, we must also have an expert in magic. Banner and Agent Chin had no objections to this. As for the top, organization that Tony mentioned, it is the response to other world invasion crisis organization that Tony took the lead to form, referred to as RTOWI. It means, top, in Persian, referred to as the top. The top is a shelter from wind and rain, 
designed to prevent the invasion crisis of other world from outside the world and not affect the development of the world. Wow, this is so cool here. Xiao Yu and Sky came here as soon as possible after school to check the results. After seeing the drastic changes in District 13, which looked more like a sci-fi base, they were also greatly shocked. After all, it only took more than a week to renovate such a large base, which shows how fast their infrastructure construction is. Tony was a little proud of Xiao Yu's exclamation, as the smartest person on earth. Compared with Xiao Yu's fuss, Sky returned to normal after a brief surprise. After all, when she was receiving education from Hexi in the dream, although the place where Hexi lived looked like the Middle Ages. The palace is similar, at most more gorgeous and cleaner. But the level of technology occasionally displayed in his eyes hands was enough for Sky to understand how much level of technology this humble palace contained. Therefore, after seeing the extremely sci-fi transformation of District 13 at first sight, she was a little amazed by this futuristic style, and then returned to normal. Naturally, the changes in Sky's expression couldn't escape Tony's eyes, Kid Sky doesn't seem too surprised by this place. Sky smiled and nodded without answering. But Xiao Yu said unabashedly, Sky has seen a lot. This aroused the curiosity of Tony and others, oh, what other place can compare with this place? Xiao Yu did not answer this question, but looked at Sky sheepishly. In this regard, Sky still kept smiling. Since accepting his eyes teachings, she has gained not only knowledge, but also the habits and cognition of treating people and treating others that she learned from he she, not to mention Sikai will unintentionally imitate Hexi. After all, as an angel who makes people feel ashamed, Hexi's perfection makes Sky want to become her. Please let us keep this secret secret before we get permission from Dad and the others. After hearing Sky's words, Banner understood. It seems that the matter is very important. In this case, we won't ask too much. After all, regarding magic, even if we know it, we can't help much. Tony saw that Banner had said this. Although he was still curious, he could no longer find out the root cause. We will help you after we have studied magic well. At this time, the father's voice sounded, help us. The original Sheriff Black also said so and did this at the same time. But every time, he would cause a lot of trouble for me. Tony raised his eyebrows. Master Fang, when you said this, I didn't mean to help you now. What I said was that we would help you after we have researched the magic. Dad was holding something in his hands, and behind him, Jackie Chan was holding a lot of crumbling items. Putting the things in his hands on the ground, his father said to Tony seriously, it will take too much time, so don't be too confident, young man. Magic is not that simple a power. Agent Chin summoned a long sword and gathered his inner strength. Old man, my power should be effective for magic, right? The father glanced at Agent Chin and shook his head. Although your internal power is somewhat similar to my chi magic, they are completely different in nature. For magic, it has a certain effect, but it is not big. Then, Dad glanced at Jackie Chan who was staggering behind him, and he shook his head helplessly. It would be great if Toru was still here. Jackie Chan these are dad's important treasures, you must be careful. After spending some time, dad moved his things here. After all, compared to the protection here, the antique store is still not very safe. Moreover, this place is also connected to the basement of the antique shop, so dad plans to use this place as his own magic laboratory in the future. While flipping through a thick magic book owned by his father, Tony felt that the words on it were dazzling. Master Fang, have you finished reading all these magic books? At the moment, Dad was immersed in reading a magic book. Yes, it's just that Dad is old and can't remember some things, so he has to find them again. Xiao Yu came forward curiously. Dad, what are you looking for? Dad, the Holy Lord is too quiet, and Dad is always very uneasy. So, Dad is wondering if the power of the Holy Lord has regathered after the world has changed. Is this still possible? Xiao Yu was shocked, doesn't that mean that the Holy Master might have escaped long ago? Dad looked worried. This is what Dad is worried about too. Jackie Chan was very puzzled. But Dad, the Holy Lord's power has been stripped away to form twelve talismans. Now the talismans are still intact, how can he regain his strength? Dad explained. The Holy Lord is a fire demon, one of the eight demons. He is born to control the rule of fire. At the same time, 
He is the dragon in the zodiac and has a supreme identity. In the original world, stripped of his power was originally a restriction placed on him by the world, and magic was a tool used to realize this fact. But in the new world, if he integrates with the rules of the new world, will he regain control of his power? Wool and cloth. Can it still be like this? Xiao Yu was surprised, and suddenly she seemed to remember something. She quickly shouted, Uncle Long, let's go and see if the Holy Master is still there. Jackie Chan was puzzled. Xiao Yu, a dragnet has been set up here. Even if the Holy Lord wants to escape, it's impossible for him to escape. Xiao Yu was still extremely anxious. No, if Dad's guess is correct, then the Holy Lord may have escaped from District 13 at this time. After all, he had an opportunity to escape from here before. Xiao Yu has already mentioned this, and if others still can't react, they are really stupid. You mean the horse charm? Jackie Chan suddenly remembered, Xiao Yu, you were right. Dad. The father waved his hands without raising his head and said, go and check it out yourself. Dad still wants to look for it. If the Holy Lord really escapes, then the previous methods of dealing with him will definitely not work. Dad wants to find a new way to deal with the Holy Lord. Quote. The expressions of the people listening were no longer relaxed at this moment, especially Tony. He thought that if there was really a problem with the horse charm, then Ethan. But for now it's all just speculation, so he has to confirm it. A group of people quickly came to the depths of District 13. As soon as they opened the door to the statue of the Holy Lord, a red face, masked with white eyebrows and white beard, suspended in the air appeared next to them. Hey hey hey, you guys are late, that guy from the Holy Lord has already left. Hearing the sound, everyone turned their heads, and Jackie Chan exclaimed, Tara. You actually woke up. Tara laughed strangely. It's really unbelievable. Once awakening came, the whole world changed. Jackie Chan, you didn't expect that all of us, your enemies, would wake up. With that said, Tara summoned her own shadow army, and each shadow ninja quickly emerged from the black shadows emerging from the ground. These shadow ninjas didn't say anything, they just looked at everyone present with their red eyes and killed them. Faced with the sudden attack, everyone showed their special abilities. Tony quickly completed the transformation of Iron Man, Banner didn't want to become Hulk here, so he hid, Sky used advanced fighting skills to solve everything that came close to her. The Shadow Ninjas, Xiao Yu and Jackie Chan are even more cooperative. Bad luck, bad luck, bad luck, bad luck, Jackie Chan shouted loudly while dodging the attack of the Shadow Ninja, Xiao Yu, go find daddy. After Xiao Yu heard this, she immediately ran in the direction of her father between the attacks of the Shadow Ninjas. Tara watched the battle and laughed loudly. Jackie Chan, I'll see how you die this time. After Iron Man defeated all the shadow ninjas around him, he found that these shadow ninjas were like lifeless projections and disappeared into the air. The strength of these shadow ninjas is not high. Thinking of this, Tony immediately activated the new function of his steel battle suit. J-A-R-V-I-S, activate the, Dragoon system. In an instant, six micro weapons flew out from behind Iron Man. The next moment, as several rays of light continued to flash in the air, all the shadow ninjas present also froze in an instant, and then turned into smoke and dissipated in the air. What kind of method is this? Tara couldn't believe that the shadow core, which she was so proud of, was defeated so quickly. Seeing that he had eliminated the shadow core, Tony's self-confidence instantly increased. He felt that what his father said before was obviously not serious, and he did not need to wait until he had researched the magic before participating in these things. Mr. Red-Faced Mask, I think it's better for you to surrender and be captured, otherwise I can't guarantee that the next emission line will open a hole for you. Tara stared at Iron Man coldly. Human, do you really think my shadow core is so useless? What? Tony was a little stunned, but Jackie Chan hurriedly shouted, Iron Man, the Shadow Core is immortal. After they are defeated, they will return to the Shadow Kingdom, waiting for the next ten summons. Quote, Tara smiled coldly. That's it, humans, facing the Shadow Core, can you finish killing them? As soon as he finished speaking, more Shadow Ninjas rose from the ground, making Tony's face behind the mask instantly look ugly. Isn't it enough to just get rid of you, the summoner? However, 
Although Tony's ray was unexpected and hit Tara's location, unfortunately, the ray passed through Tara's body and did not cause any harm to him. What? Tony was shocked. He didn't expect that his attack was ineffective. Ha 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 ha. Shadow core, kill them. Tara laughed and gave the order, and all the shadow ninjas immediately started killing everyone again. Everyone instantly fell into a hard fight again. Although the shadow ninjas were not strong, they could not stand up to the large number of people. Even Banner is thinking about whether he should change. When I was about to die, the savior finally arrived. Dad rushed over with his magic weapon and Xiao Yu holding onions, Tara, you should continue to sleep. When Tara saw her father appear, she was instantly frightened and panicked, old man. You are actually here too. However, Dad had no reaction at all to Tara's panic, go away, go away. Go away, go away. Go away, go away. Along with the spell, the magic weapon in Dad's hand lit up with green magic energy, and then the onion in Xiao Yu's hand was wrapped in magic energy and flew towards Terra uncontrollably. No, don't, I hate onions, she shouted piercingly, and Terra turned around and ran away. In the last 5.2, amid Terra's unwilling shouting, the onion hit Terra. As the magic energy covered Terra, Terra's mask also fell out of the air uncontrollably. And Terra's voice disappeared. Obviously, Terra was sealed again, and if there was no accident, he would not be able to come out. Jackie Chan breathed a sigh of relief. Dad, luckily you came in time. Dad snorted. Dad has always said that you must use magic to defeat magic, but Jackie Chan you always don't listen. 11. Jackie Chan was very helpless. Dad, I don't know magic. In any case, Terra was finally solved. As for whether there are other existences like Terra here, it is obvious that there are, so before determining the situation of the Holy Lord. Finally, they will conduct an inspection on all the things sealed here. Opening the secret room where the statue of the Holy Lord was placed, sure enough, the statue of the Holy Lord was completely reduced to a shell. Dad stepped forward and looked carefully, and finally came to a conclusion, the soul of the Holy Lord is no longer here. He has escaped from here. We are in big trouble. Everyone's expressions became solemn. Although they didn't know how powerful the Holy Lord was, being able to rule the world was enough to illustrate his threat level. Tony suddenly trembled. No. Ethan. Before he finished speaking, he turned around and flew out. Tony walked so fast that before anyone could react, he had already soared into the sky towards the hospital in New York. Xiao Yu asked in confusion. What's wrong with him? Dad's face became solemn. Oh. Something bad is going to happen. Sky also understood what happened. Stark borrowed the horse talisman before, and the Holy Lord's soul disappeared unknowingly. It is obvious that the Holy Lord's soul is attached to the horse talisman and has escaped from here. The father figured out why the Holy Lord had not responded before. The Holy Lord had already transferred his soul to the spell before Ancient One Magician and I set up defenses, so he never responded, and we also I didn't find any noise from him escaping from here. When Banner heard this, he already understood. What a cunning enemy. I have been listening to you talk about the Holy Lord. Is he very powerful? After seeing Tara's power, Banner couldn't help but despise the Holy Lord. However, his father's words made Banner's heart sink. The Holy Lord once ruled the world with his demon brothers. In a hospital in New York, Tony directly broke the window of the ward where Ethan was staying. Ethan. However, there was no one in the ward, and Tony immediately walked out of the ward to ask the nurse where Ethan was. Isn't Dr. Ethan staying in the ward all the time? We just checked his body this morning. Obviously, the nurse didn't know where Ethan had gone. Take me to the control room. His face darkened, and Tony felt uneasy in his heart. Ethan had paid so much for him, and he was not willing to put Ethan, who had finally regained consciousness, into danger again. Arriving at the monitoring room, through the monitoring screen 26, Tony discovered that Ethan had been staying in the ward since he woke up last night until this morning. It's just that when he came to use the horse charm to recover Ethan's injuries, in order to hide the function of the horse charm, he deliberately kept it secret for a period of time, so he didn't see what happened after he left the ward. An image of Ethan reaching out and summoning flames. The time in the surveillance picture came to around 9 in the morning. Shortly after the nurse and doctor left, Ethan got up from the bed, opened the window and jumped out. Oh my god, 
the surveillance personnel on the side opened their eyes in horror when they saw this scene. This kind of thing happened, but they have not noticed it until now. This is definitely a mistake in their work. Tony glared at these idiots. Just wait for my complaint. After leaving a harsh word, Tony turned and left. He had a little idea of Ethan's changes, but he still didn't know where Ethan was going. Definitely, there should be no problem with Ethan's safety. After all, such a big living person jumped out of the window on the sixth floor without causing any commotion. It was obvious that he was not injured by jumping out of the window. J-A-R-V-I-S, search for Ethan's whereabouts with all your strength. Okay, sir. The ability of J-A-R-V-I-S has been adjusted and upgraded several times, and has reached the limit of Tony's current ability. After the J-A-R-V-I-S search was intensified several times, information about Rillian Lay soon appeared in front of Tony's eyes. After Ethan jumped out of the window and landed on the ground, his movements were very light, without causing any movement, and then he started running at a speed far exceeding that of ordinary people. After changing his clothes on the way, he rushed all the way towards Texas. Texas, what was Ethan doing there? Tony was puzzled, but he planned to follow him and have a look, but when Ethan moved to the wild, he didn't know what Ethan did. He seemed to have discovered that someone was watching him, so he saw his body blurred for an instant, and then he disappeared disappeared from the screen. Tony stopped in flight. J-A-R-V-I-S, what happened? J-A-R-V-I-S. Sir, according to analysis, Dr. Ethan should be optically invisible, and his movements cannot be found in all surveillance images. Tony frowned. Ethan doesn't have this kind of super ability. J-A-R-V-I-S. Drive Ethan also doesn't have super speed or a super body. Tony's anxiety became more and more serious. Call Master Fang, I have something to confirm with him. Soon, Dad answered the call from Tony, Stark, something is wrong. Tony ignored his father's words and asked directly, Master Fang, can the soul of the Holy Lord possess a human body? Dad said matter-of-factly, what nonsense are you asking? The Holy Lord escaped. He hid his soul in the horse charm, and then escaped from District 13 with your hand. Tony said seriously, so this is my question, can the Holy Lord possess humans? Dad understood. Is your friend possessed by the Holy Lord? Tony's pupils tightened. Yes, Ethan is just an ordinary person, but he suddenly showed super physical fitness and speed, and was able to become invisible and avoid my tracking. Before he finished speaking, his father interrupted Tony loudly, Oops. Something is not good. The Holy Lord can actually use the magic power of other talismans without resorting to the power of runes. Sky analyzed calmly on the side. Dad, based on the origin of the Holy Lord you once told, I think he should have absorbed the magic power from the spell with the help of the dragon soul, and then relying on these magic seeds, he can slowly slowly regain your full strength. Xiao Yu interrupted. If we separate the power of the Holy Lord again, wouldn't we be able to have two sets of spells? Cool. When Tony heard the discussion over there, he became increasingly uneasy, wait a minute. Does the Holy Lord have the ability to use spells? The father comforted him. Don't worry, Stark. The Holy Lord uses the human body to carry out activities. His power has not been fully restored. His strength is not disappointing. However, we must find him as soon as possible, otherwise we will wait until the Holy Lord fully recovers. With power, he will definitely come back and take away his body so that he can rule the world again. Tony heard this and said anxiously, but I can't find where Ethan is. Dad asked. So before that, is there anywhere he wants to go? Tony. Texas. Dad frowned. He was very unfamiliar with this world, so he didn't know what was special about that place. Is there anything unusual happening in Texas? Tony quickly asked J-A-R-V-I-S to search. More than a month ago, the Flaming Skull Ghost Rider, which had disappeared for many years, reappeared. Flame. Skeleton. Dad's expression became more serious. Dad sensed the darkness. Tony was completely confused. What do you mean? Dad explained. I communicated with Ancient One Magician before. There is hell in your world. Flames and skeletons are obviously products of hell. The hell in your world is completely different from the hell in our world. The Holy Lord wants to use hell. The power to restore one's own strength. Tony felt like his head was about to explode. Hell. Why is hell involved again? Dad said seriously. This matter is not something you can solve. 
Don't take risks rashly. I will immediately inform the Ancient One magician that I need his help on this matter. After saying that, Dad hung up the phone and immediately dialed Ancient One's number. As the owner of the Time Gem, the Ancient One was actually able to sense that something was wrong early on, but unfortunately, due to the constant interference from Otherworld, the Ancient One no longer believed in the future he saw. Because Time Gem can only observe the future without Otherworld interference, even if it is observed after the interference, it will not be able to see the next Otherworld interference. Therefore, for the Ancient One magician, although the occurrence of this situation caused turmoil in Day's heart, it still increased his workload. He had noticed the imminent movement of the Hell Dimension early on, but Mephisto did not come forward in person, so the Ancient One did not take action. Song Shijong was monitoring Ghost Rider's movements. However, when his father called him, Ancient One realized that the matter was out of control again. As he had had in-depth communication with his father, he also knew something about the Holy Lord. If such a demon joins forces with Mephisto, it will definitely make Mephisto bolder and his actions more aggressive. As a demon, the Holy Lord naturally fits the Hell Dimension. Once he recovers his power, it will definitely not be a happy thing for this world. Understood. I will monitor the Hell Dimension with all my strength. If there is any change, I will prevent the two sides from joining forces. Ancient One put down the phone, stood up with a serious expression, opened the space passage and came to New York to the holy place. In District 13, after Dad hung up the phone, he said to Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan, I need you to go to Texas to collect the magic power of Hell. Dad, I have to prepare for this. Jackie Chan was helpless. Dad, but my job. Dad, don't mention your job. This matter is related to the safety of the world. You must be careful. Later, Dad ignored Xiao Yu's excitement and expectations and said to Sky, Sky, your mission is to keep an eye on Xiao Yu and not let her get involved in this matter. Hearing this, Xiao Yu instantly showed a frustrated expression, while Sky nodded thoughtfully, I understand, Dad. Banner asked on the side, Is there anything we can do to help? Agent Chin also said, as S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, I can still help you investigate some things. The father shook his head and said, you need to use magic to defeat magic. If you don't understand the dangers, it's better not to get involved. The two looked at each other and didn't expect their father to refuse so simply. However, they have no other choice about this. Although their father doesn't let them participate, they don't have to listen, right? In an abandoned quarry in Texas, a group of mercenaries are ambushing around, apparently to deal with a certain entity. Ethan, or rather the Holy Lord came quietly outside the quarry. Looking at the mercenaries in full swing, he sneered, Mephisto, are these the helpers you were looking for? They are stupid and unbearable. One strike. Next to the Holy Lord, the figure of a gentleman old man appeared. He had no entity, just a phantom, Holy Lord, don't underestimate any desperado, they are the best seeds in hell. Holy Lord Yi's eyes gradually turned blood red, it doesn't matter, anyway, we are just cooperating. I want the ghost rider, and you want the body. Mephisto nodded gracefully. Of course, because of your appearance, the sorcerer supreme began to guard against hell, so I can't help you, so. The Holy Lord said proudly, you don't need to take action, just be your coward. Mephisto's eyes flashed with a look of horror, but on the surface, he just snorted and disappeared. The Holy Lord didn't care about Mephisto's departure, and he didn't care about what was going on in the quarry. He just stood quietly in the darkness, waiting for the true Lord to appear. An hour later, the thrilling sound of a motorcycle engine continued to approach from a distance. The Holy Lord looked towards the place where the sound came from, and saw the ghost rider dazzling like a dancing flame in the dark night, approaching rapidly. In the quarry, the mercenaries also heard the noise. Kerrigan, who was working with Mephisto, excitedly picked up the latest weapon from Hammer Industries and aimed directly at the ghost rider rushing towards them. He fired a rocket launcher directly at the evil spirit. The ride flew over. Ghost Rider did not escape the automatic tracking of the rocket launcher, and was immediately submerged in the explosion after a thunderous roar. The mercenaries were extremely excited when they saw the target hit. They had dealt with the Ghost Rider several times, and every time their fate was very miserable. Many brothers died at the hands of the Ghost Rider. This time, when they saw the soaring fire, they all thought that Ghost Rider had died in the explosion. 
However, everyone's joy did not last for a few seconds. The flaming skull of Ghost Rider had already walked out of the deep pit left by the explosion, holding the iron chain with both hands and looking at them enthusiastically. Kerrigan swallowed, quickly retreated and ordered others to attack Ghost Rider. However, facing a hell creature like Ghost Rider, very few human weapons can have an effect on him, and these are not in the hands of mercenaries. Facing the hail of bullets from the mercenaries, Ghost Rider opened his mouth and roared, then ran towards them. Bullets and shells fell on Ghost Rider, not even causing any damage to his clothes. The mercenaries couldn't do any harm to Ghost Rider, but Ghost Rider swung the iron chain, and the hot flames danced on the iron chain. Anyone it touched would be burned to ashes by the flames from hell before even having time to scream, leaving behind a dazzling fire that then dissipated in the world. This is a massacre, a massacre of human sins by knights from hell. The Holy Lord looked at this massacre and found it very interesting. At the same time, the Holy Lord coveted the power of Ghost Rider. Faced with the resistance of the mercenaries, Ghost Rider became more and more excited. Finally, after taking a rocket hit from the front, Ghost Rider climbed onto the abandoned excavator next to him as if playing. Then with a roar, flames spurted out from his body, and then the flames spread to every corner of the excavator. Just like his motorcycle, the excavator has also undergone earth-shaking changes after being transformed by the fire of hell. The originally abandoned excavator has now become extremely ferocious, spraying flames everywhere. A huge amount of rotating excavating blades are burning red in the hot flames, and countless sparks are constantly shooting out. Controlling this crazy excavator, Ghost Rider cracked his skull and laughed while chasing down every mercenary present. Under the attack of this behemoth, the originally abandoned quarry was completely reduced to ruins. The mercenaries suffered heavy casualties. Only a few of the nearly a hundred people escaped this massacre from hell. In this chaos, a woman quietly jumped out with her kidnapped child. Sensing the two men leaving, Ghost Rider chased them on a motorcycle. When everything came to an end, the Holy Lord walked out of the darkness and chased the path of the flames that the Ghost Rider had left. Before leaving, he took a meaningful look at the ruined quarry, it seems you have found another soul that you can deceive. Quote, Soon, the originally dead Kerrigan crawled out of the ruins with a drastically changed appearance. Compared to his previous appearance, Kerrigan at the moment was as terrifying as a mummy crawling out of a grave. Kerrigan stood next to the ruins, his eyes shining with hatred, Ghost Rider. I will definitely kill you. However, the Phantom of Mephisto suddenly appeared next to him. Go and complete your mission, I have given you a second life. As he spoke, he raised his head and glanced at the sky in the distance, and then disappeared without waiting for Kerrigan to reply. In the mirror space, Ancient One looked at Mephisto who disappeared in front of him, you are disturbing reality again. Before Mephisto disappeared, he left a message, this world is undergoing huge amounts of changes, Ancient One, and the Earth will never be safe. Not long after Kerrigan left here, Iron Man fell from the sky and looked at the devastated ground. He was very surprised. J-A-R-V-I-S, is there any energy left here? Since coming into contact with magic, Tony has discovered that his understanding of magic is not as good as his ability to understand technology. Although he can understand it, it takes a lot of time to understand it deeply. Therefore, in order to participate in this matter, in order to save Ethan, and in order not to have no way to face this kind of thing in the future, he went through all the hard work and found this kind of device that can detect everything in the forum of scientists in the sky. Scanning Analysis Technology of Energy Matter Although it is impossible to completely analyze all the components, we can at least get a rough result. After inputting the magical knowledge obtained from Area 13 into the database, JARVIS can analyze the attributes of at least 80% of things on the Earth. JARVIS, sir, based on the energy reaction remaining in the air, which has the attributes of evil, sulfur, decay, and heat, we infer that it should be the breath from hell. Tony looked solemn. Sure enough, it has something to do with hell. What about Ethan? Did he show up? JARVIS, no information about Dr. Ethan was found, and the Holy Lord did not find it either. Tony frowned. Such a big thing happened here, and the Holy Lord didn't come. How strange. J-A-R-V-I-S. Sir, a breath of hell was detected heading northwest. 
According to database comparison, it is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, that flaming skull. Tony was greatly surprised. Many secret data and information were collected from major organizations under Tony's authorization and then stored. But Tony himself was not very clear about this information. He was concentrating on research. After all, the enemies in the future would be too powerful, and he needed to seize every minute of time. Therefore, a lot of information is available in JARVIS, but Tony does not know it. Only at this critical moment and contact with relevant entities, JARVIS will proactively provide its information. After all, it is artificial intelligence, not artificial life. JARVIS, according to SHIELD's filing, Ghost Rider's real name is Johnny Blaze. He is a famous motorcycle stunt master. After his father's death, Blaze transformed into Ghost Rider at night to hunt down guilty people. Ghost Rider's judgment a guilty person, even if he has not committed murder or arson, as long as he has done something wrong, as sinful in the eyes of Ghost Rider. Quote dot dot dot. After becoming the Ghost Rider, Blaze seemed to have an immortal life, and he successfully survived many times in the face of fatal dangers during stunts. Ghost Rider's weapon is an iron chain. He has mastered the flames that are difficult to put out, and can control the flames to transform any object. His exclusive motorcycle therefore has the ability to move at super high speeds, act autonomously, and can also move vertically it can move on walls and water and is not controlled by any terrain, its eyes can cause mental harm to people and even death. But the reason for the birth of Ghost Rider is unknown. SHIELD's experts speculate that it is not caused by mutation. Tony nodded. Now it seems that it is related to hell. Wait, the Holy Lord seems to be the demon of fire, right? J-A-R-V-I-S, yes, sir. The Holy Lord's goal is most likely the Ghost Rider. Tony quickly took off and flew in the direction of Ghost Rider, informed Dad and the others of this news. Since the Holy Lord has thoughts about Ghost Rider, he will definitely come to find this burning skull. In a remote and hidden monastery, holy place, Johnny Blaze has just lost the ability to transform into Ghost Rider with the help of Holy Place magicians. After being troubled by Ghost Rider for many years, Johnny felt the happiness and freedom of ordinary people for the first time. But before he could be happy for a long time, he was shocked to find that the magicians who were supposed to protect Danny, the human body created by Mephisto, actually wanted to kill Danny and prevent Mephisto from coming to the Earth. Johnny wanted to stop him, but unfortunately, having lost his strength, he was no match for these magicians. He could only watch helplessly as these people took Danny away and prepared to execute him. In the magic circle, when the magicians were preparing to execute Danny, Iron Man fell from the sky. What do you cultists want to do to this child? A punch knocked away the magician holding the knife. After knocking down the magician who was holding Danny down, Iron Man carried Danny and flew to a safe place. Hey kid, can you tell me what's going on here? And, have you seen that flaming skull? However, in response to Tony's inquiry, Danny just shouted, be careful, turned around and ran towards the cave. Doesn't this kid know my famous Iron Man? While Tony was still confused, a warning tile suddenly came from JARVIS. Iron Man immediately started the thruster and flew towards the sky. When he looked down, he saw a mummy-like monster looking at him with a pity expression. Where did this monster come from? J-A-R-V-I-S, sir, you should see this. After being reminded by J-A-R-V-I-S, Tony looked in the direction of the magicians and saw that the magicians who were originally alive and kicking had now turned into fossils. There were even green growths on them. Shet, what's going on? Tony was shocked that these magicians who were alive and well before turned into fossils in the blink of an eye, but what exactly they had gone through was completely unknown to Tony. After JARVIS scanned these fossils, it gave the result, sir, they were naturally corroded and finally became fossils. Tony frowned, but this is not reasonable at all. Wait. Tony seemed to have thought of something, and looked down at the mummy who was slowly walking towards the cave, that guy did it. Wait, he seems to be going to find the kid just now. Not good. Iron Man immediately flew towards the cave. However, I don't know if it was because of Iron Man's presence at the scene. Although he and Kerrigan entered the cave front and back, when Iron Man entered the cave, Kerrigan had already disappeared with Danny. 
Tony searched the entire cave and only found two unconscious men and one unconscious woman, what is that guy going to do with that child? Then, Tony looked at the three unconscious people on the ground, I can only get the answer from them. Soon, Johnny and Father Morrow woke up from their coma. As soon as they woke up, they immediately rushed out of the cave. However, there are no magicians anywhere outside the cave, only an iron man who is operating the projection screen. Seeing the two people coming out, Tony opened his visor. Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, and this priest Morrow, hello, I don't need to introduce myself. Father Morrow naturally knew the playboy in front of him, I know, Iron Man, Tony Stark. Johnny didn't pay attention to Tony's appearance. He looked around and saw some unknown things in the open space, but he didn't see that familiar figure. What about Danny? What did they do to Danny? Tony pointed at the extra fossils in the open space, that child. He was taken away by a mercenary named Kerrigan. Moreover, these people should be the ones who imprisoned you. They were also turned into fossils. It was Kerrigan who probably did it. I think we should talk about what happened. Kerrigan, he's not dead. Johnny looked stunned. Although when he turned into Ghost Rider, he seemed to have changed his personality, but under normal circumstances, he still had the memory of becoming Ghost Rider. Otherwise he would not have disappeared for many years because he could not bear the condemnation and pressure caused by the killing. Now he finally got out of this predicament, but Danny was captured, especially since Kerrigan was still working for Mephisto. Reasonable, Johnny wanted to stop Mephisto's plan and rescue Danny. Moro also said solemnly, we must set off immediately to prevent Mephisto's plan from succeeding. Tony was confused as he listened, but he heard the name Mephisto. He had already noticed the name of this Hell Lord when he communicated with his father and the others before. Now, Ethan, who is possessed by the Holy Lord, is also here, and it is obvious that the two parties have reached cooperation. There was a thought in my heart, where are you going? I will go with you. Maro looked at Tony. Although I'm happy to have Iron Man's help, we want to know why you want to get involved in this matter. Tony looked at Johnny. My friend is possessed by a demon. He made an agreement with Mephisto and came here for Ghost Rider. Since you are going to cause trouble for Mephisto, then follow you so that I can see him earlier. My friend, besides, stopping Mephisto's plan and protecting the safety of the Earth, isn't that what a superhero should do? However, as soon as these words came out, the faces of Johnny and Johnny became even more ugly, which made Tony feel a bad feeling in his heart, what's wrong? What happened? Moro's expression was extremely serious, you're a step too late. What's the meaning? Johnny said, I can't be Ghost Rider anymore. Tony thought of a bad outcome in his mind, and he asked urgently, what do you mean you can't change CGDA into a Ghost Rider? Moro explained with a grimace, not long ago, Johnny separated the Ghost Rider from his body. If Mephisto really has a cooperative relationship with the demon you mentioned, then the Ghost Rider should be in that demon's body now. Quote. Tony was hit hard, and at the moment he realized just how bad things had become. In other words, there are three people in Ethan's body now, one is Ethan himself, the other is the Holy Lord, and the last one is Ghost Rider. But Ghost Rider should originally be influenced by the host. The Holy Lord is the master of the current body, which means that the Holy Lord has obtained the power of Ghost Rider. This was too much trouble beforehand. Tony quickly asked J.A.R.V.I.S. to contact his father and tell them this information. Then Tony immediately turned to Morrow and asked, where will they take that child? Morrow had already understood at the moment. It seemed that the devil in Tony's mouth was definitely not that simple, the place farthest from heaven. Tony was stunned, what? Is there anywhere on earth that is farthest from heaven? Johnny's answer was straightforward, Hell's Kitchen. As soon as the answer came out, Tony understood instantly, okay, there are indeed villains walking around there. Now that we know the place, let's leave quickly. Wait, Mephisto is so brave, he dares to be a going to New York in front of Sorcerer Supreme. Johnny asked in confusion, who is the Sorcerer Supreme? Moro replied, I have only heard of the great magician who has protected the earth from hell for thousands of years. While talking, Nadia, the woman in the cave, also woke up. After she also learned about Danny's whereabouts, she decided to go to New York together without hesitation. Seeing that neither Johnny nor Morrow objected, Tony naturally couldn't stop each other's actions. 
After all, Nadia was Danny's mother. With her participation, it might have miraculous effects. Speaking of which, I still don't know why Mephisto wanted to arrest Danny. Tony asked his own question. Moro replied, Danny is Mephisto's child. Mephisto wants to use Danny's body to come to the earth. This is why the magicians here want to kill Danny. As long as Danny dies, then Mephisto's plan it's completely ineffective. Tony watched several people pack their things. Obviously, you will not allow such an inhumane way to solve the crisis. None of the three answered. Nadia was certain that as Danny's mother, she would not allow her child to be in danger. Johnny, on the other hand, has a full sense of responsibility. He has established a relationship with Danny, so naturally he will not let this child become a sacrifice for Mephisto's arrival, and he also does not want him to have any accidents. As for Moro, as a priest, he would not allow such a thing to exist, because it was completely contrary to his faith. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.